Right here. All right. So yeah. So we, so we live. We live right here with it. Ross Seymour. Ross Seymour in here. Yes, I. Just vibes. Yes, I. We just vibes in. You know, just vibes in on some things here and. You know, we did a prophetic time. You know, they say the last days, however long them days is. But we seen certain things prophesize and come to, you know, to fruition. And we were doing a reasoning and the letter to Flora, you know. What the guy name again? Ptolemy? Oh, oh, you know, Ptolemy. 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 Mm -hmm, you got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ptolemy is the uh, epistle to Flora. And we was doing a reasoning on that. And in that reasoning, kind of um, pull out a thing I have in my head. I've been having it in my head for a while about how long we've been, you know, being taught false doctrine. Mm. And when I look and we reason about this letter, the letter also speak about the adversary. And we all know who the adversary is, the main chief adversary. You know, some call him the devil. You know, some call him other names. But at the same time, we see that in the letter shows a tripart teaching of the scriptures. When I say a tripart, we know that means three parts. So we have the teachings of the Most High Himself, you know, thus say the Lord, you know. And we're going to go through some scriptures in that as well. But then you have the teaching of Moses. And then we have the teaching of the elders. Mm -hmm. Now, from this letter, from Potome to Flora, whether Flora is a, a real person, uh, like some say she might be, they might be referring to, you know, at the, the church. That's for another time to figure out that. But in this teaching, to see this tripod and to see that there is the word of the Most High, there's the word of Moses and the word of the elders. Now, most people don't know these things. And the reason I know most people don't know these things, because I don't hear nobody talk about these things, and I just find out about this myself. Chan, chan. So it's not like something I know before we I just found out about this thing a couple of days ago. Wait, it was not even a couple of days ago, it was what? Yeah, well, yeah, it was a couple of days ago, Friday evening, Saturday morning, holy, you know? Like a sabbatical reading we were having. It's when I find out this, so I ain't even been two full days yet. Now, the ones them who supposed to be the shepherd are supposed to feed the flock. Mm. Is the one them who went to these theologian schools and all these things and have the gift of gab to come out here and preach the word of the Lord. Because in order to preach the word of the Lord, you have to like the talk. A man who don't like to talk ain't teaching the word of the Lord like that because he ain't trying to talk too much. He might give one, two things and then he done for the day. You know, just hear he, he not... I won't say a joke, but hear the hear the funny thing in it where 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 the Lord laughs, right? Moses, Moshe, according to the scripture, he was a man that was complaining that listen, don't make me be the one to speak to the people, cause me not an easy speaker to the people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he had to grab his. Just uh, say then, according to the scripts, go get your brother Aaron, cause he, you know, Aaron had the gift of gab. But go true, yeah. go true, go true. <laughs> yes, you know so. Like I say, in order to, you know, to be a, you know, a shepherd, you know, you have to like to, you know, to hurry it, you know, to speak. And like sheep, too. Yeah, and like sheep. <laughs> you know, but the problem is, we have a lot of these who are supposed to be feeding the flock. And according to scripture, they've been feeding themselves. Now, they went to school to be a theologian, so they learned about this tripod teaching. They have known this from their early teachings before they even come to you and start to preach to you. But they have never told you about this. They tell you the entire Bible is the word of God. Well, I never believed that in the first place because 
is a thing called is, you know the songs of Solomon. And if Solomon is is, is 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 praying to you know the Mosai and this is in the Bible, that is not the Mosai's words. This is being spoken to him. You know. Then we have proverbs. You know. <laughs> so I have to look at some of these things and wonder where these teachings come from. Now, when I find out that there's a tree part, a tripod to this thing, it starts to make more sense to me. Now, this is something that the adversary has known from jump. Mm. This is why the other day I asked you a question about they say that is a a thousand years is like a day with the Lord, right? Now, if a thousand years is a day with the Lord and Lucifer was day with him like in creation, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, the adversary. That means, in my logic, a thousand years for us is a day for he as well. Mm. So, when we look throughout history, and see all the atrocities and the things that has went on from Sodom and Gomorrah to all kind of things that went on throughout history to our modern day times with genocide in Uganda and these kind of place and whatnot. Apartheid in South Africa, 400 years of slavery in America. You can see why he is patient. Because if a thousand years is a day for he, he could be patient. Hmm. Now in his patience now, we have time to pick out the ones them who have a heart of selfishness and envy and greed and, and, and iniquity to use those against us, the children of the Most High. Because I look at this thing and even the Messiah say you are like you are um, children of your father basically the devil you know when Cain killed Abel is that the first blood sacrifice mm, uh -oh. is that the first one that Lucifer got to uh -oh. the first you know the first that was supposed to be a shepherd uh oh blood sacrifice that's another topic is you see <laughs> so when I look at these things now I watching these things and I watching these pastors of today and looking at them as the same Pharisees of yesteryear. The ones them who say crucify him. The ones them who turn him in to fear um, um to um to Pontius Pilate. Them same one day is the same the same type of energy that we have here today with some of these supposed to be shepherds that are supposed to feed the flock. You know, they say they're feeding the flock, but if you look at them, they got two and you know, they got one and two jet, one one was congregating, telling that um, the audience that is um, his congregation that the father came and spoke to him last night and tell him he need a new jet. And people, Does he need a jet or no? He need a new one. That means he don't got one already. <laughs> and people and, and people and people clap for them thing. People love them thing. Yeah, and know? the people them hollering and screaming and going got your money game. It remind me what Elijah Muhammad says. Why they love the devil? You know, I'm, I might be miss saying this, so so people who know it better than me then just correct me but he says why does like why do the people like say lost sheep black people why do they love the devil because he gives them absolutely nothing do me a favor and exp and, and go to that um the, um the floral letter and 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 explain how we explain and the other reasoning the the, the that's right part teaching with the first book of uh um, with, um, like with the first five books with the torah Okay. To show the, we have to show them the, you know, in this reasoning here to show that teaching of, of part is Moses teaching, part is the teaching of the Most High, and then the elders had their contribution. Okay, okay, check this out, check this out. I'm sending this one here to you. Um, look at this picture. I'm gonna try to bring it up right here on the um, on the screen so ones can see it okay i was looking for a screen saver as people can see i'm scrolling through some pictures but looking for a screen saver like a kind of a moses screen saver we just use this for right now as we go through some of the basics the i and i brethren acts i and i to to do so first of all um let's take this one right here this is one of i think i think it's one of the black artists right here 
you know um you know with the the image in our image you know with the icons in our image you know the image of i and i people original so i just sent it to the eye and i'm gonna download it here but we're talking about the epistle to florida pistol pistol basically means like a letter but in the context it was like a teaching letter you know it was like kind of a teaching letter you know what i'm saying so the letter usually was to respond to certain questions we have like we have his response but Tommy's response to flora but we don't really have what she wrote what we have is like him responding almost like when we're reading like in the new testament we see like paul is like and and the different ones are responding you know what i mean so we just have the response letter but in the response letter we have to kind of you know get from how how the response is written what the question must have been like so I just shared that with you right there because that's going to go along with this when we're talking about the three part, the three parts of what is called Torah or commonly what's called the law. Let's say of what is called the five books of Moses. This is mainly, but the principle applies elsewhere in the Bible. So I have Potomi's Epistle to Flora. This is coming from the Bentley Layton. Just want to give people the resources if they're interested in following up more for themselves. Bentley Layton, he has one of the best um, kind of Gnostic, apocryphal, Gnostic scriptures, like translations. The footnotes help to kind of clarify certain things from the language, whether it was Coptic or whether it was Greek or even some Hebrew terminologies. So here we're on the first page. We're using the same PDF, bro. Using the same PDF. So the first page has like the content, like has the content, and maybe one one day we can go over that right there, because that kind of explains the content, the context, you know, based on what the the scholars and the researchers have presented. And from my own study of it, it's, it's pretty clear. But here we're gonna look into it. There's a prologue, right? Let's go to the page of the prologue right here. There's a prologue, right? As you can see the prologue, right? And it's speaks about. The, I'm just gonna read the top of the of the the um, superscription, right? So it says difficulty of the topic. This topic is difficult, right? First section. Second section, false opinion on the topic. Third section, the law speaking about Torah, not established by the perfect God. Next section, nor by the devil. So some will say that by reading the Bible, and there's a lot of debates are going on in the black conscious communities, especially, you know, where we pass through and everything as well. And this would really help to put into a better context what people are trying to grasp. So some say that the Torah, the scripture, because of what it has in it, the Old Testament especially, was established by the devil. And it wasn't the, the, the real God and father of Jesus Christ, as they would say. And... Others say that the law was not established by the perfect God. And when we say the law, the Torah, once again, law equals Torah, right? In this sense, right here. But the Torah is speaking about those five books. That everything in the five books is not the perfect God speaking or, or is not... Some things are testimonies of men in their interaction of consciousness and becoming more aware of who the perfect God is. And, and either reforming their ways or going further into their ways. Now, it discusses the topic, right? And I think right here, we should, we should begin probably from right here, the B section, exposition, the nature of the law, the nature of what is called the Torah. So let's bring that up clear as we did the other day. I'm thinking about keeping this one here. Still don't have a name for the first one, but I'm going to try to put that up pretty soon before hopefully the new Shabuah begins. So one should see... Part one or part two? Yeah, part one. But the Trinity, the Trinity of the Trinity of the Torah. Something like that. Because we're using, we're using Trinity in the sense, right, of the three parts. But yes, also sir. to reflect to something higher that we'll bring out hopefully as we go forward. But here the exposition is the nature I like to say to hint ones the nature, the nature of the Torah, of the direction instruction. So here's the key thing: that when people say law from an English reading the translation, you get a faulty idea of what Torah is. So if you're saying that law equals Torah, it doesn't equal Torah completely. The Hebrew sense, in the sense that they're even bringing out here, 
is the Torah or the law is the full directions, instructions that are contained therein. And the direction, instruction of those that are directly from Yahweh, Jehovah, and other direction, instructions that one can glean from the examples of what we can say is the patriarchs from an Israelite perspective. But the three divisions of the law. So the three divisions of the Torah. Now, why just sent you, bro, why just sent you right here? Because we're just trying to lay out some of the basic um, exhibits. Some of the basic exhibits right here. There's a lot here, but it's not really a lot once you get the principle of it. You see why I just sent you? Um, it, it's like a footnote, and this is in the Schofield Study Bible to Exodus chapter 20. Now, Exodus chapter 20 is where we have what's called the Ten Commandments, or more better, the Ten Words, right? And I want you to keep that in mind because the Ten Commandments are Ten Words from the perspective of the epistle to of Flora is the only part here that is directly from the perfect God or the perfect Elohim. We could say the God and Father of Yeshua HaMoshiach in that form and sense. You know what I'm saying? Is the 10 words right here. But at the bottom of it, let me see if I can actually, how did I send this? Okay, I, I got to send this to myself right here so I can bring this up on the phone. Do you see, do you see that? What I just um took a took a quick uh, screenshot of? Yeah, the mosaic. Yeah, um, it says the mosaic covenant on top. Okay, it says the mosaic covenant. Can you just re are, are you able to read say the first part? Just part of the first part where it says the mosaic covenant one the first given to Israel. Exactly. Yeah. It says the mosaic covenant given to Israel in three divisions, mm. each essential to the other and together forming the mosaic covenant can, can you pause right there for a moment so i want to point this out to the eye is that as the brother said that many of those who are supposed to be kind of teachers or preachers or shepherds of the people right should know these basic things what i find is from a a a judaic a hebrew not just a jewish in the sense of people call themselves jews but those who really study the torah from like a faith perspective and a knowledge perspective they already know this you know what i'm saying and, and it was this yeah. part here what's interesting is some of the gnostic things that i find that are true in the gnostic gospels or the gnostic teachings are things that yehudi or jews and in other words the ones in the time of yeshua and in the apocryphal times and no doubt in old testament times understood and knew what i'm trying to say is that the knowledge we find here it corresponds with the basic teaching right of the torah where it says right here that the mosaic covenant given to israel in three divisions um did that thing did that thing come up over here hold, hold on for a moment um brothers and sisters because we're, we're we're touching on something here that it'll be good to have the actual yeah here it goes i want i, I want the people to see it on the screen while i read this that ones can see this for themselves let me just save this right here let me come out of this give me one quick moment because it's it, it's, it's important to have this okay and, and just for the people to remember too that like we just said these um these these um theologians these religious scholars these uh, preachers and deacons and all these religious hierarchies of the of yesteryear and this and and this time and dispensation as well that in their teachings to be at the level they are, they knew these things. So it's not like they was teaching up or, or doing these things blindly or ignorant of these knowledge. This is knowledge that they have, that they have suppressed from you in order to further their, their own personal agenda. And pretty soon we are, you know, we jump into some scriptures to prove that. Okay, here we go right here. Here we go right here. Okay, this is not that, well, it's not that clear. Um, maybe ones and ones can brighten up their screen. This this exhibit right here, here, here. So you can see what we're, re we're just reading at the top right here. Now, this is in the Schofield Study Bible, one of the English um, Bibles that was recommended to I and I as a Rastafari a long time ago. They said that, some say, I'm not saying this is actual fact, but 
I, I took this on faith, you know, and credit, and I found good, you know, good, good results in it. They said His Majesty was asked about a Bible, any Bible that outside of, you know, the Ethiopian Bibles, and some say that he mentioned a Schofield Study Bible. Now I don't know whether that was TTI, Twelve Tribes of Israel, because there were some of those in the early days or others. But I came across this, and as I began to read and read the Bible, I started to want to know more. I started to read the footnotes. And follow up on the footnotes and I find that by and large there's areas I disagree but by and large maybe over over 75 to maybe 80 something percent you know are very good notes you know what I mean that helps us to catch up on things that the past and the preachers haven't taught us right so right here it says the Mosaic Covenant given to Israel in three divisions each essential to the others and together forming the Mosaic Covenant all right, keep that in mind. There was a Mosaic covenant. And what you see my highlights there where it says the commandments, yes, the first part, expressing the righteous will of God. All right, that's what we have in Exodus, X, Exodus, X, X, Exodus 21 to 26. The second part is the judgments, all right, the judgments governing the social life of Israel. Then it gives you the chapters 21 to 24, right, and then we have the ordinances. The ordinances, or some would call it the statutes, or even precepts at times in translation. But it's all, mostly it's the same Hebrew word, but sometimes in English they'll, they'll put ordinance here and they'll put statute there, and they might put, you know, um, precept here. But here the ordinances govern the religious life or the spirituality of Israel. So we have Exodus 24, XXIV 24, and 12 to XXXI to 31 and 18. Now notice it goes on to say these three elements form the law. You see what it says? These three elements form, yeah. quote, the law. Now that means the Torah in the Hebraic sense of the directions and instructions, right? As that phrase is generically used in the New Testament, then it gives a New Testament verse. The commandments and the ordinances form one religious system. In other words, what what Jah has said in the Ten Commandments, the, the Ten Words, and in keeping the feasts, the festivals, and those really righteous or spiritual ordinances, right, of the times and seasons. The commandments were a ministry here, it says, of condemnation and of death. Then it's going to point to the New Testament. The ordinances gave in the high priest, who is also, according to the Hebrews, here's what connects with Christ, he is the anointed. That's why it says that Christ is our high priest, because the high priest was always anointed. In the high priest, a representative of the people with Jehovah. This is why the New Testament says that Yeshua now is our high priest, and he presents our offerings before the Father. And in the sacrifices, a cover, and the cover is the atonement, Yom HaKippurim, for their sins. Now, all this was done in anticipation of the cross. So in this view from Old to New Covenant, that all that the Israelites were doing was like a, a shadow of that which was anticipating the, 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 the tree of his cross, the cross tree, right? And it says the Christian is not under the conditional Mosaic Covenant of works, the law, but under the unconditional New Covenant of grace. Now, he gives the grace. I would say the grace is unconditional in the sense of if you believe in his son but you have to first believe in the son you don't get the grace if you don't believe in the son you know what i mean it's almost <laughs> like if you trust me i just hit you up with stuff you know what i mean you didn't do nothing yeah. to get to hit up the stuff so i can just trust you and not give you nothing you know what i mean so that's i'm not saying there's no unconditional but people try to say that everything in the faith of christ is unconditional if you don't have no faith then you lose those those conditions of grace, in other words, all those un unconditional grace. Now, I'll point this out right here because from a Hebrew perspective, though this isn't a Christian Bible, the Schofield, first Schofield study Bible, I would recommend to all the fellow disciples, you know what I mean, because it has a, this information, I didn't go through all the verses, but if one has time and study it, you will become as knowledgeable, even more knowledgeable than many of the rabbis and the, and the teachers, even of old of today and the past and the preachers. Because not only would you understand what the Hebrews were doing and what they were ordained to do, but how this connects with the new covenant. You know what I mean? Or how this connects with Yeshua. See, a lot of people don't understand, can't really explain, well, why is Jesus the high priest? Why is Yeshua the high priest? You, you know what I'm saying? You know, 
because the high priest was the only Messiah and the priests were the only anointed ones. Nobody else, when they didn't have no kings, were anointed in Israel, only the high priest and his sons. That's why Peter says in the New Testament, he says that we have become this holy, this royal priesthood. Because if Yeshua now is the high priest, they auto automatically understood, well, it's because he is Moshiach. And the only Messiah in the Torah is the high priest and his sons. And therefore, if Yeshua is the first begotten, right, that he becomes like that high priest, you know, that big brother standing place for father. And we who have the Nazarenes, we become like the priests. So it wasn't saying that everyone in that sense, you know, was was a priest, but they would have the potential to that priest role. Right. Because they were looking at the order of the Old Testament. I just want to point that out right here because my brother did ask me to bring this forward. But since while he was speaking, I was I was getting this exhibit and everything. I just want to show that exhibit. And here here now we're just going to break down, according to the Epistle of Flora, the three part division of the Torah. Now, I just showed you Schofield Study Bible already breaks that down. And, you know, those of ones who know that the way we study the Ethiopian Hebrew and even the other, you know, Yehudi, you know, anyone who says they're a Jew or Israelite, we're going to study what they what they got. You know, what I mean, if we find they're right with this, we'll 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 we'll, we'll accept that. If something else they're wrong with, we're not going to throw out what they're right with. You know what I'm saying? But one thing from studying from a Judaic perspective, the, the any Jews that really study Torah already knows these things, too. This is what's interesting. Right now, first, the multiple authorship of the law. So what's called Torah generically, generally, like five books of Moses, is what they're speaking about. Not just one chapter or one book, but all those five books. It's saying there's not just one author of those five books. Right Now, first, you must learn that as a whole, the law, Torah, contained in the Pentateuch of Moses, Pentateuch means five volumes of Moses, was not established by a single author. You think Moses just sat back and he said, okay, we Israelites, I'm going to dream up what our patriarchs were talking about in times like, like 400 years before I was born, 500 years, Abraham and all them. I'm going to make up these stories. And then he made up these stories and the Israelites just, they would have stoned him. They will say, fool, get out of here. You know why? Because they knew these things. So, you know what I'm saying? So even by telling the story of your your nanny, your granny, or whoever, you know, from two, three, four, five generations, you might be the one who got the credit for it, but you are just now putting their stories and what, you know, the family, the, you know, the family oral tradition into print. So I just want to make people understand when it says not established by a single author. Like in the Western Gentile way, people think the Bible, you know, like King James sat down and he was like, all right, book one. Right. But I mean, right, not by God alone, because people say that the Bible is 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 like was written by God, like everything in the Bible is God's words. No, it's not. You see what I'm saying? Because in the Bible it has Satan talking. So whose words is that? You know what I'm saying? You, have that. you know what I mean? Rather, there are certain of its commandments that were established by human beings as well. Even some of the curses. Think about it for a moment. When Noah cursed Canaan, <laughs> I was going to say this, right? Was it the Lord saying, curse be Canaan? You know what I'm saying? When the patriarch said, don't marry the Canaanites, right? It wasn't the Lord that said, don't marry the Canaanites, but it was their passed on tradition, their passed on culture. You know what I mean? And so even there, when they gave certain commandments to their own children, in some cases, you can't find where the Lord said that, right? You know what I'm saying? You can find how it might go along with what the Lord wants to have done, but it's a commandment of human beings, right? Indeed, our Savior, now here's where it brings a new covenant, right? Here's where it brings a new testament, right? Rightly divided. Our Savior's words teach us that the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, divides into three parts. So you remember what we just read about the about the, the Torah, the commandments from Exodus chapter 20, the footnote of the Scofield Study Bible, the three parts? For yeah. one division belongs to God himself and his legislation. So there's one part of the five books of Moses that belongs to um, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah himself. 
right? And what he legislates, what he says, you know, told Moses, this is what, tell him this, tell him that, you know, while another division belongs to Moses, right? Indeed, Moses ordained certain of the commandments, not as God himself ordained through him. Let's pause on this. In other words, Moses did ordain some of the commandments based on what Elohim ordained through him. But there were also other commandments that he ordained that was not what Elohim ordained through him. But he ordained it, right? You have to remember who Moses was. Moses was this one that the people said that they couldn't even listen to God without dying. You know, but Moses could go into a thick cloud. Moses could be with the God, thunder and lightning and all the noise and horns and everything. You know, and that wasn't bothering Moses. He could be in that for 40 days. Can you imagine? 40 days, even if Jah is chatting with you for half of those days. But remember the people, when the people heard Elohim, they was like, yo, we're going to die. You know what I mean? So... Um, I'm not questioning, I think one should not question Moses' intent there, but understand how the Torah was put together. Rather based upon his own thoughts about the matter. And yet, you remember when they had came to him because there was somebody that was doing something, I think they were collecting sticks on the Sabbath day, right? And there was, remember when the daughters came to him because their father had died and they said, what about our daddy's inheritance? And Moses was like, wow, this is a good question. And notice what he did. He didn't say, well, do this, do that. There's a case where Moses does say that, but there's other cases that are above his grade that he says, hold on for a moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to check with Yahweh, you know, Jehovah about this right here, right? But there's a third part. So we have Elohim, Moses, the man of Elohim, and then we have the third division belongs to the elders of the people, right? How do you think people know their stories? How do you people, they think, you know, even when we were born and we were little babies, we hear about all these stories. Uh, haven't you heard about stories in your family before you was born? You, you know, <laughs> you know, who, who told you that? They're your elders, right? Yep. Okay, so, so the elders have a part to play in it. Who likewise in the beginning must have inserted certain of their own commandments. You will now learn how all this can be demonstrated from the Savior's words. So we're going to pause right there because the next section is actually the proof of this and this was known even in the in time of Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus said to them? You know, from the beginning was not so. You know what no, I mean? I want you to read the next part. No, I want you to read the oh, next okay, part. Okay, okay, we go through. Legislation of Elohim distinct from legislation of Moses. In other words, legislation, what John says to do is distinct from what Moses says. When the Savior, speaking of Yeshua, right, was talking with those who were arguing with him about divorce and it has been ordained in the law that divorce is permitted he said to them for your hardness the hardness of heart Moses allowed divorce of one's wife now on the margin and the margin says Matthew 19 and 8 for ones who want to look it up right now from the beginning or but from the beginning it was not so for Elohim, he says, right, Yeshua said, has joined together this union. And what the Lord has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now, we have this also. Now, notice where this is going back to Genesis. I think Genesis, um, Genesis uh, chapter, what was it? Chapter 2, chapter 3. Roughly around, yeah, chapter two or three, right around there, right? That's when Adam saw his, you know, his woman. It's interesting. We'll go to that. Here, he shows that the law of Elohim is one thing, forbidding a woman to be put asunder. Now, let's pause right here because this is just, Potomi is giving a summary. You have to go to those verses because Yeshua said, except it be for fornication or sexual immorality. Right? Any man that puts away his wife for like any other reason, you know, just feelings, you know, mixed up mood attitudes, you know, he's causing adultery and he'll be committing adultery. So there are reasons, or there's, there's a basic reason, but it's not for every reason, right? Like Moses gave that impression, but li listen on. Now, here he shows that the law of Elohim is one thing forbidding a woman to be put asunder from her husband, while the law of Moses is another permitting the couple to be put asunder because of hard-heartedness. 
Yes, sir. And so accordingly, Moses ordains contrary to what Elohim ordains. For separating is contrary to not separating. Let me pause on this right here. There's a margin. The margin here is Deuteronomy 24 and 1 and Matthew, I think, 19. Can't see. Look, let me look at this right here. Matthew 19 and 7. So you see in the margins, there's a, there's a key scriptures right there. Right? Now, notice too, in the beginning, we didn't touch on it, but in the beginning, it speaks about logic. So what, what Potomac is reasoning here is logic. Right? When he says that Moses ordains contrary. In other words, Elohim said this and Moses said that. Right? But then he goes into it. He says, yet if we scrutinize Moses' intentions with which he ordained this commandment, we find that he created the commandment not of his own inclination. You know, like somebody makes a commandment, you know, like, um, you know, like that guy, Henry VIII. He, he, he made the, 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 the English church not Catholic and Protestant because he wanted to marry a woman so he can have a son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Moses didn't do it because that was to benefit him. But of necessity, because of the weakness, let's go down here, the weakness to whom it was ordained. For the latter, the, the people, the Israelites, were not able to put into practice Elohim's intention. Let's pause here for a moment. Isn't it obvious if you read even in Exodus chapter 20, after the commandments, after verse 26, we see even right there, right after Elohim himself gave the perfect, right, but unfulfilled to, the, to that time law, how the people said we can't hear this anymore. Right? In the matter of their not being permitted to divorce their wives, some of them were on very bad terms with their wives and ran the risk of being further diverted into injustice and from there into their destruction. Moses wishing to excise, like to cut out this unpleasant element through which they also ran the risk of being destroyed, ordained for them of his own accord a second law, a second Torah. Now, you know what's interesting about that word right there? That's another way of saying Deuteronomy. And all of these quotes about what Moses, in a sense, ordained, we get to find them where? In Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. You know, because Deuteronomy means a repetition of the law, right? Yes. The law of divorce, choosing under the circumstances. And I know some of us don't like this expression. We reason on it, might reason on it again. The lesser of two evils. Because we're still saying, still one of them is evil, right? But there's a verse in the Bible that says, explain to me why there is even evil. Why the, Yahweh says he, he create, you know, he created the evil. It's because evil shall slay, you know, the wicked. You know what I mean? The lesser of two evils as it were. So that if they were unable to keep the former, that is Elohim's, Torah law, they could keep at least the latter and so not be diverted into injustice and evil through which utter destruction would follow in consequence. These are Moses' intentions with which we find him ordaining laws contrary to Elohim, or at least to the first laws that Elohim ordained. At any rate, even if we have for the moment used only one example in our proof, and this is a good example, it is beyond doubt that, as we have shown, this law is of Moses himself and is distinct from God's law or from Elohim's law. Now, Paul, in Romans chapter 8, any of y'all get a chance, just read through it. It's like Moses... I mean, it's like Paul is describing up to six different laws, but at least two distinct laws. You know what I mean? You know. I want to touch on a few things there. I want to touch on a few things. I don't want you to read to that part there. That's why I want you to stop too. I want, to, I want to touch on a few things. Um, first, I'm going to touch on the last one just now, the, 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 the lesser of two evils. <laughs> but we, had, we had this reasoning. Yeah, we did. And I one of those people who, of, of the... The notion that I don't have to choose evil. I could leave it alone. But in this context right here, I agree with the context because I look at the context in a way that it, it is not the law that is evil. They're not choosing between two evil laws. They're, cho they're choosing between two evil decisions. Mm. 
Um, so it's not, it has nothing to do with the law. So I agree with this. Although I is, like, I is one of those that say if it's a choice between an evil and a lesser evil, I leave both of them alone because I don't choose evil. But this is not the law that is evil. If the, in, in the other one, it says what what you put, like what you put together, basically no man put asunder. Uh, <laughs> so if you put you and this woman together, and for any reason I decide to part, that is an evil of y'all, not an evil of the law or uh, what Jao did. What Moses did now by giving a written out, it mm. is not the law that is evil. It, it is your action that is evil that required this law. Their heart it was evil. It was so no. hard that they couldn't find. Remember what Yeshua says, only for the sake, except for fornication. You know what I mean? Except for like, and Paul says something likewise in the New Testament. He says that if the unbelieving spouse goes away, then the believing spouse is not under no obligation. It's like if you believe and your woman don't believe, or if you believe and your man don't believe, right? In the way, truth and life, but they're willing to stay with you. You shouldn't be like, well, they got to believe. I can't believe they don't believe because I believe and I want to get rid of them because I want to find a believer. Now you become the evil. You have the hard heart. But if they decide that they just want to go their way, right, let them go. That's almost like, in a sense, the fornication thing. You know what I mean? There, are, yeah. there, there, there may be a situation, right, where there's no other recourse. It's like for murder. There's no ransom for murder. If you know somebody intended to murder somebody like in cold blood, according to the law, there is no ransom. They can't pay nothing for that. The only thing they can do is, is, is go to the soul that they have murdered and work it out over there. If you over what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not for us. We can't even forgive them because they didn't, they didn't take our soul. You know what I mean? They didn't and, take our life. You know what I mean? And the, next, the next thing I want to go to now is the, um, you, you made it clear who the... The high priest is, you know, the high priest is, you know, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, you know, Jesus is the high priest. In the new covenant, in the new covenant. In the new covenant. So, yeah. Yes, in the new covenant. And that's what we're in right now, we're in the new covenant. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> we know who the high priest is. Now, we have people here on earth uh -oh. who are trying to put themselves in their shoes as the high priest. Moses see. <laughs> and these same people have the same problem why Moses had to write this law in the first place <laughs> because of their heart hardness of their heart <laughs> now when you say hardness of the heart uh -oh. right I break down hardness of the heart as selfishness my lord or viciousness mm. you understand it's a serious sin you dealing there with the hardness Hard of the heart harden not your heart yes <laughs> yeah harden not your heart you know so now look at the Pope at their Pope, let me say that, not the Pope, their Pope, because we ain't got no Pope. Well, 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 we have an Abba, we have a Pop, we have, we have an Abba. Uh, you know, Pope just exactly. means Daddy. They have a Pope. Yeah, yeah, right? their Daddy, their Daddy, their Father, yes. their Father. No. <laughs> Didn't their Pope say, from ancient sea of the Pope, that they carry on to this day, mm. that the Pope is the mediator between man and God? Fire. Either the Pope that Fire, yo, what God? What God that? <laughs> that's, that's their talk, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that means they put themselves as the high priest, as the mediator. Ah, Antichrist. That's, that explains the All Antichrist. Right. Boom. No, that is because of their heart. The selfishness, the covetousness in their heart, the hardness of their heart. It's what do this. The same people who telling you nowadays the mediator mm. is the same people who tell you that the Sabbath is on the fourth day. Mm. And, and it was told that they're going to change the times and laws. Mm. By changing the Sabbath, you did both at one time. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Now, mm. when we spoke earlier... Wow, wow, yes sir, yes sir, hot. That was a hot, hold on for a moment, hold on for a moment. Um. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one, you're not, I think that one deserves the, 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 the what is it, the, the, the triple horn. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, yes, sir. you heard what he said. By changing the Sabbath, by doing away with the seventh day and moving into the first day, 
is both to change times and laws at one stroke, one shot. Boom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go through. <laughs> now, these same people have known what we have just finished discussing about the triune part of the law. Mm, mm -hmm. They have known this from antiquity. So now, in the hardness of their heart, they feel it now. If Moses and the elders could add to the law, why can't they add to the law too? Mm, okay, I, I see the point. I see the point the eye is making because they understood, like we only understood it. They made us understand it or or misunderstand it from a religious, from a uh, religious kind of a you know spookism kind of like, but they so understand it from how it was put together you know like what yeah. what goes into the sausage so to speak exactly you know fire burning so sausage yeah <laughs> they, over, they overstood this from long ago and this teaching has been passed down from generation to generation to generation to those who are the puppet masters and the controllers mm. now these same people here are the ones who control the theologian schools that these ones go to in order to come out and preach and have the churches and these things and we know that they were taught how to preach to you. Mm, psychologically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, they come out with these things. And now you have these same, these same energy that was there 2,000 years ago and, 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 and before. Like I said, the same one who said crucify him. Mm. The same one them who, who, when he was preaching, was asking who this fella think he is. Because mm. he's correcting their doctrine. The same one who went up in the temple and tear it down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you understand? Because you're defiling the house of the Most High. You know, the same one who chastised them. Mm -mm. It's the same one we have to do that same energy. So now, when we look at... You hear people who go to church, and they will... Because I don't go to church. So I, I, I have to rely on the people I know that go to church. <laughs> and hear the testimony. The testimony I hear from the people that go to church is the majority of people tell me the same thing. The pastor have the Bible, but he don't really talk. He like he don't really teach scripture. You know, he might have the Bible, but then I say one or two things out the Bible, and then he continue to freestyle because they have the gift of gab, mm. and they have a lot of knowledge with this gift of gab, so they can go up there and freestyle for two, three hours, and bamboozle with all kind of talk. Mm. And, and, and then you come out of there and you're hungry because you have not been fed. Mm. What did Messiah tell Peter? He asked him if you love me. Feed my sheep. Ah. Feed the flock. Feed the flock. Yeah, so but... the first place I wanted to go, I wanted to go to First Peter. First Peter chapter 5 is where I wanted to go first. Okay, give me, give me, a, give me a key verse. Uh, give me some key word in there. I'm just letting um, some people, people see some of the iconography, some of the beautiful iconography, bringing out the humanity of Christ. Could they deny his humanity? Yeah. For Peter 5, it says, And the elders which are among you, I exhort, who, who oh. am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Okay, hold on for a moment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take hold on for a moment. I'm gonna take glory, <coughs> glory, glory revealed. Those two unique words. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, if you can remember, like when you use some of the search software, you remember, like maybe if you if you don't remember the whole verse, but you can remember like a part of it, right? And the whoa, 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 oh, check it out. You said First Peter, right? Yeah, First Peter uh, check, five. Check this out. Make a bookmark or a note of it. Isaiah forty and five, where Peter is, is quoting from, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. But I'm gonna scroll down right here to First Peter. But rejoice that that one there. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Messiah's sufferings. Uh, start at um. Nah, nah, 1 Peter 5, 1. Oh, 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 pray that, pray that, because both these verses have glory and revealed. I, I, I'm there, the elders, the elders. Yeah, yes, exactly. Who are among you, I exhort. Yes, I, I got it, got it. We're there. 
Okay, I'm gonna start over and, 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 and read it again. It's gonna be read from um, First Peter five one to four. The elders, which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ of Christos, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Amlak of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, mm. not for filthy lucre, Fire. but for a ready mind, a ready mind. leader mm. as being lord over God's heritage, but being a example an example to the flock mm. and when the chief shepherd shall appear ye shall receive a crown of glory mm. that faded not away now that last part there right mm. think about what we just said a little while ago before i start to read that scripture there about the teachings these people have the knowledge they have and what they did not give you Mm. They come out here and freestyle and tell you all kinds of but not actually giving you doctrine and like a, like, like a correct scripture and adding the little two cents into it because they feel okay that was done earlier they could add their thing too. Knowing they ain't supposed to do that, right? But at the same time, they overstand the fourth part of this chapter. Um, fourth part of this chapter when he said, "And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye." shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Mm. No, no. How much of a doppy you could be to know all this? And because of the hardness of your heart, the selfishness, the covetousness in your heart, you like the dog with the bone looking in the pan, dropping bone in the pan, trying to get the next bone. Mm. This is what these pastors out there doing. It's a dangerous thing they're dealing with. Mm, mm. When the chief right. shepherd shall appear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to go to Isaiah 40, 45 right now, jump there right there and then we'll go to and then we'll hit Ezekiel. Uh, 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 hold on for a moment. When Chief Shepherd shall appear. Shall appear. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Become made made manifest, be visible. That which is hidden. You know, or unknown, manifested by words or deeds. Yeah, word and deed. Okay, so here we was looking at um, the key words as one soul. We had four verses, and the brother read four verses, and there's four verses according to the King James Version that have glory and reveal. So I was looking that up, and Isaiah 40 and 5 says, And the glory of Yahweh of Xavier shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of Yahweh have spoken it all right so this is this is just the main you know main um verse right here this is the main verse right here this is an interesting verse because we see that even in New Testament many times besides having beautiful you know anointed relics you know in the word sound many times they are quoting you know what I mean the prophets, the, the prophets or the scripture, you know, like whenever in the New Testament they say it's written in the scripture or the scripture saith, they are almost always referring to the Hebrew Bible. So I just point that out, like bringing the, the actualization, to use that word, you know what I'm saying? The yeah. actualization of this um, prophetic word that became like a song or music, you know, like sometimes a song or music and then... You go through real experiences where that song is almost like manifesting. You know what I mean? It, it was just a song you were singing. You know what I mean? And it had beautiful words in it, but it made a lot of sense when you sing it. And now you see this song like manifesting. So that, that glory of, of the Lord being revealed. You know, weep not behold the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. And it says all flesh shall see it. You know what I mean? You know, that manifestation of God in the flesh the chief shepherd that bro you don't have a Schofield study bible yet right 
Um, let me know because if I get, if, 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 um, if a one finds a good price on it, you know, I might just, just try to try to get that. But if you, when you do get it, let me know because, but you know, I like to you to get, get that because it talks about Psalm 22, um, 23, and I think Psalm 24. These are like a trilogy of Psalms, right? And it talks about the whole shepherd motif. Because when we talk about the shepherd right there, it's like in the Hebrew, there's these layers on layers, you know? Let me just share this right here. If I took a screenshot, it'll take me a moment. So I'm just going to read this quickly right here because it talks about Psalm 20, yeah, 22, 23, and 24. It's called a trilogy. They form a trilogy. In Psalm 22, we have the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. In John chapter 10, verse 11. In Psalm 23, we have the great shepherd who, according to the scripture, is brought again. He is brought again from the dead through the blood of the eternal covenant in Hebrews 13 and 20. And he tenderly cares for the sheep. And then in Psalm 24, we have the chief shepherd appears as king of glory to own and reward the sheep and and notice what it says right here it says first peter chapter 5 verse 4 check it bro I, i'm gonna have to take a picture of this one and share it with so my great. brother right, right so here, here. <laughs> because when he said that i was thinking about it but i was thinking like yeah yeah i know that thing right there but you know let me make the brother go true right and he's still going true, but it's like there was a pause, you know what I mean? And that pause was like, yo, you could jump in there, you know what I mean? Like the spirit's like, you could jump in there. I didn't want to be like, like it says in the song, um, woe to, you know, wo wo woe to what is it, like the, 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 the deceiver who hold back his sword from blood. You know what I mean? Like you don't bring out that scripture, you don't bring out that word. I didn't even know it was going to link even right here with what, what the eye said, you know what I mean? And what the eye brought out in that verse. But so so I brought up his majesty, his majesty's picture, the eye trait. And this is the one that says, um, it says, um, God in the flesh. You know what I mean? I don't know if one's how ones understand God. That's a whole other reason right there. You know what I mean? But anyway, go, go to my brother. I sent it to you. It's Michael 34. It's Michael 34. It says, um, Son of man prophesies against the shepherd of Israel. Okay, son of man. My son of man. Okay, let's go over here. Uh, son of man. Okay, prophesy. Okay, prophesy against the shepherd. Yes, the shepherd of Israel. Okay, against, let's see right here. Against shepherd. Shepherd. You know, every time I spoke that word from being young, Cause it was like a funny word, shep sheep. You know, I always would say it out like as shep herd. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I always get it right, shep herd. You know. Um, okay, what, what 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 chapter is it? It's thirty four. Thirty four. Okay. Wait, Isaiah? No. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Okay, Ezekiel. My bad. I was okay. Ezekiel, chapter thirty four. Wow, I got a few things here. Thirty four. You say one to ten. Yeah, okay. one to ten. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready, ready. Yeah, like you can get a few places to touch. All right, we're here. You, you want to break that down for me? Okay, give me one, one moment. Come on, I'm here on the back, and I'm trying to send this. I'm trying to flip this picture here to my brother. Save this and send it to him because you know, son, you know, son, when you take a picture on your on your phone. Sometimes if you want to like have a wide angle, it sometimes have it on the side and all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. so here, so so you can see it. I'm, I'm going to delete the other one right there. That's that's the wrong angle. Okay, that's the part. That's the footnote there. You, man, I need to get a new Schofield Study Bible myself. You see my page is like some ancient scripture. It, 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 no, for real, it looks like it, it looks like parchment. You know, my Bible is looking like parchment. And everything. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 34. So here I'm on I'm gonna utilize the Schofield Study Bible because I noticed also when I study his Majesty Bible that has some footnotes and some study some study aids 
in it um, in the Amharic I noticed that a lot of things correspond so chapter 34 here chapter 34 what we have in this section here from chapter it actually begins in chapter 33 verse 21 we're not going to go there but just mark this 33 verse 21 the general theme is the future kingdom of the son of David so this area of scripture right in chapter 34 is part of a general theme that began in the previous chapter you know like they they put the chapters the books in the chapters but then when you people have read it and studied it they see how like you know if you're reading something and like if you're watching a movie a series you can see where one series end halfway where next series is beginning you know what I'm saying yeah. so they might have the two flow into each other that's what they did with the, the, the chapter numberings I just want to point that out because I can see where this is going um, chapter 34 is a message to faithless shepherds of Israel but this is all part of a general theme of the future kingdom the future government of the son of David right of the son of David and it begins and the word of Yahuwah Exiabia the sustainer came to me saying son of man right or Ben Adam Ben Adam yes yeah, son of Adam Ben Adam my son of man prophesy against the shepherds of Israel prophesy and say to them thus saith the Adonai Adonai Yahweh it is Adoni that, that's Adonai the, the L O R D when it's capital L O R D it's usually like Adon or Adonai and usually whenever it's G O D in caps the Hebrew is often like Y H W H Jehovah just just FYI Adonai Yahweh to the shepherds or the sovereign the sovereign he who be who he be the sovereign the master the sovereign he who be who he be to the shepherds woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves should not the shepherds feed the flock Qu question mark ye eat the fat and y'all clothe you with the wool y'all kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock. That don't sound like somebody with a heart and heart. Harden not your heart as in the day, right? As in the day of provocation. Okay. Right? As in the day of, you know the interesting, the word rebel in Hebrew is from the root of bitter. So in a sense of calling somebody rebel in biblical Hebrew, it's like to say that they are bitter ones. It's, it's kind of interesting, embittered. You know, literally like embittered one, but that word can also mean rebels. And that I mentioned that because of seeing that Meriba, Meriba, where the people were arguing about water, that's when Moses had, you know, done he struck the rock one time when he was not supposed to and everything. But it, but what's so, so interesting about that is that what you say about the hardness of the heart. That's what Psalm ninety five says, harden not your heart like they did in the in the provocation. You know, where they argue, you know, like, you know, y'all eat the fat and y'all clothe you with the wool and y'all kill them that are fed, but y'all feed not the flock, right? The disease y'all have not strengthened, neither have y'all healed that which was sick, neither have y'all bound up that which was broken, neither have y'all again brought again that which was driven away neither have y'all sought that which was lost but the for but with force but with force and with cruelty y'all have y'all ruled them and they scattered and they were scattered because there is no shepherd and they became meat or like is this food right here they became your yeah, okala they became food right to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered when notice they became food for all the beasts to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered you know when they say we united it's better but when we scattered they can pick us off one verse, by one one by one verse six my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill yea my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them Therefore, your shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I live, saith Adonai Yahweh, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat or food 
to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith Adonai Yahweh, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hands and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat or food for them. No. These, this, this voice right here, where he just finished speaking, and these voices just here finished speaking, there, that goes with exactly what we have been seeing for a very long time. Even back to the time of the Messiah. Because when the Messiah came 2,000 years ago, he was rebuking these peoples for their false doctrine of the Old Testament. Mm. Mm, the leaven, the leaven, all, all the leaven that they puff up, puff up, yes. you know, <laughs> the leaven. Uh -huh. And it's still going on today, where you look at some of these preachers and some of these pastors, they got these mega churches. All leaven. <laughs> you know, all puffed up, you know what I mean? <laughs> they got two jets. Five house, Bentley, all kind of thing, and some people in the congregation don't know when they're gonna get, don't even know if they have enough money to pay all their bills this month. Yeah, but yeah. they're really finding a way to fleece the congregation with the gift of gab. They come every Sunday, uh, every time they have the the congregation, and they fleece your money with the gift of gab. And with charisma too. That is how they catch you. I never met a man with the gift of Yahweh who charismatic. Oh, but you know, but you know some of the word charisma. If you study that in the New Testament, that that is um, charisma is like is like a type of grace. You know what I mean? It was charisma is a good thing. It can be a good thing, charisma. Right? Oh, it's you. Yes, exactly. It's you. In the scripture, it's like it links with the word for grace in the New Testament. But then I think about it. And I say, well, don't they say that the one they name they name Satan or the adversary, he fall from grace? You know what yeah. I mean? Like they have the charisma, right, to to inspire people to want to listen to them. You know, but then they recognize that there. You know what I mean? And they treat them like sheep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, they don't use that charisma to to feed the flock and to help the people to even do better or to even do for themselves, but they come with their leaven. You know what I mean? That puffed upness. Like the, you said, the guy said he, he wanted a new jet, the Lord or somebody. You know? Did he say the Lord told him that? Yeah. He said he had a dream and the Lord told him he needed a new jet. No, I, he said I, the Lord, I, but he didn't, say the, he didn't say the Lord's name. You remember that South Park episode? I don't know if you've ever seen South Park, where they were doing this Christmas show, and it turned out that they just kept saying Lord. They would never say Jesus, but it turned out that, that the Lord they was talking about was the Lord Satan. <laughs> no, for real. It was the, it yeah, was the yeah. funniest. It was the funniest episode, but it was so real like that. You know what I mean? They all preparing for this big Christmas thing, and they said, "The Lord, the Lord." But when they tried to say Jesus, they were stopping. No, no, no. Like don't, no, you know, like they don't say the name. So he was someone that his Lord told him to do that. You're gonna come to the congregation. And listen, I need a new jet, not a, not not a, a, a old one or another one, but a new one, a new one. And for I mean, the you don't got one already. And he already has one already. And the people can't see that. You know what I mean? Or they do see that and they're blind to that. Because this section you pointed to right here is part of what will happen during the time of the future kingdom. That's why, that's why I pointed to that. Because what you, when you said in the time of the Messiah 2,000 years ago, I'm looking at the Schofield Study Bible and the breakdown here reminds me of the Hebrew, how it breaks down the sections sometimes like Sometimes a particular prophecy will go through a couple of chapters and might end even halfway in the chapter or begin halfway in the chapter. It's like the first part in chapter 33 is hearers of the word but not doers, right? And then this chapter is the message to faithless shepherds. And where the brother had me read to verse 10, 
the next verse is 11 right going on to verse 31 the end of the chapter is talking about Israel to be restored and the Davidic kingdom to be set up but that's only after these faithless shepherds are dealt with you know what I'm saying yeah. in other words part of him establishing the kingdom even the kingdom of David on earth would have to first of all 2,000 years ago Yeshua was talking about hearers of the word but not doers Look, that, that was his because Yeshua quoted you know these here scriptures very much so you know what I mean and, and he was saying to them listen this is what I'm actualizing this Yeshua was saying I'm actualizing this but then there were things that would have to be actualized like they say in the second advent you know what I mean or the second coming as one say and what we're saying is that the second coming has come and we are in the process of establishing the kingdom on earth as the days of heaven on earth but in order to do that you have to deal with the wicked you know what I mean you have to deal with what is you know what I mean you have to take out the um all that which offends let me back up to um 22 real quick same same book let me back up to 22, 22. Chapter, chapter 22 yeah chapter 22 um starting with um 25 from 25 to 28 Okay, okay. We, yeah, we, just, we just talking about him talking about he need another plane, a next plane. When he don't have one already, he need another jet. Not a plane, no, a jet. A plane and a jet is two different things. Wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 22? Yeah, Ezekiel 22. And you say go to verse... Um, 25. 20, oh, conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. They're going to say conspiracy. <laughs> 25 to 28. <laughs> 25 there's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion ravening the prey now you see where Peter got it from like a, a roaring lion ravening the prey they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made her many widows in the midst thereof wow Wow, wow, wow. Because, you know, in order to make a widow, you have to do something to the mind, right? Yes, right. You have to kill the mind. You see what I'm saying? It, it, wow. Her <laughs> priests have violated my law. Notice he said my, you see that? Yes. He didn't say they have violated the law. He says my, you know what I mean? They have violated my Torah, right? And have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. Notice plural. Sabbaths. The weekly Sabbath and the festival seasons. And I am profane among them. 27 her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain filthy lucre and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining divining lies to them saying thus saith Adonai Yahweh when Yahuwah have not spoken. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Uh, um, say it. Say last sentence again. Okay. Her, and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies to them, saying, Thus saith Adonai Yahweh, when Yahuwah hath not spoken. <laughs> not one word he said to them people that what they're telling you that he said. They said that the Lord God and God said, God talked to me. You know, I was just sitting down the other day and God was just talking to me. And he talked about it like he's just some joke. You know what I mean? You know they're talking to the devil. You know what I'm to Satan. Yeah. You know that. You know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going to jump, uh, um, well, um, we're gonna jump out uh, um, like Ezekiel right now. But for the people that are listening, you have to check out um, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 1 to 20. You know, you have to check that out for yourself. That one is a kind of a longer one. So I want to really go through that one there right now. Because it's 1 to 20. I want to get to certain things here. I get into Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah chapter 23. He said, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. That one there I want to get into real quick what? is Jeremiah one, chapter that one is one to four to verse one to four and that one there. Was that twenty three? Yeah. Jeremiah twenty three, verse one to four. Okay, woe to the pastors. Oh, pastor is just another word for shepherd. You know, yes. Just for ones, you know, to pick up. So they use shepherd and pastor, but basically the same idea. Woe be to the pastors or shepherds that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith Yahuwah. Thus, therefore, thus, like this, saith Yahuwah, Elohe Yisrael, the Elohim, the power, almighty power of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You all have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith Yahweh, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither where I have driven them and will bring them again to their foes and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith Yahweh. Behold... No. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. okay, this this verse right here. I like that part. It's like the youths be talking today. Lacking. You caught lacking. But they yep. won't be lacking. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will raise to David, to Dawid, to David, a righteous branch. And a king, a negus, a melech shall reign, shall be coronated, and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Okay, we just pause right there. <laughs> At verse 5, Revelation 5.5. 5. Yes, sir. <laughs> This this showing you here, right? How dangerous these people are. They say they're supposed to be the shepherds of the most high. They're supposed to be the ones that's feeding the flock. So they're gonna build these big churches and all these things here. But now if you look around, you see a lot of people leaving the churches and thing and like you say you're chasing away the flock. And you're not going to look for them. When you see people out here that is walking up and down with Bible, trying to talk to different people, wherever the nomination they're from, you notice it's always the people them out here who really can only talk to novice. If you're a novice in the knowledge of spirituality and religious orders and these things, these people can probably speak to you. But if you're not a novice, these people wasting their time coming, trying to speak to you because you're going to have to end up teaching them something. Mm, mm. Now, when mm. the Messiah was walking the earth and the, the apostles was walking the earth, they weren't sending nobody to speak to you. They were coming they self for the authority of their knowledge. The pastor don't want to talk to nobody. The pastor will see you in the grocery store and pass you straight. You wouldn't even know he's a pastor. That's just what he does on Sunday. Church on Sunday. Oh, church on Sunday. For, fil for filthy lucre. Church on Sunday. <laughs> for that filthy lucre. Just like the scripture just said. You're not going to look for them. Mm. We have no idea how much times we in a store or anywhere in public and we are standing next to a pastor or just walk past a past. We have no clue how much times that happen because... They do not open them out outside of getting money. If they're not getting the look, they ain't running them out. Well, well, you know, like a performer, right? Like a performer that go on stage ah, and stuff. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You know, and that's what they perform. You know, you can't expect, like, you can't run into, like, some singer in the supermarket and ask them and to sing a song. Sing. Sing a song for you. Okay. Oh, yo, can you see that song? I love that song on your album. And they're going to stop and put down their groceries. <laughs> So uh, these, these, <laughs> these, uh, you know, pastors and these deacons and stuff, they become like you said, performers. Because if they're on stage, you ain't getting nothing from them. And even when they're on stage, 
you still ain't getting really nothing from them because they ain't feeding you the correct food. But, but you know, the, 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 the interesting thing is, I, I don't know, like, how, like, I mean, I know how other people may do it, but for I self, like, to have a part-time commitment, you know, like, you know, like, like, okay, I just do this on this day, and then I do something else, and while I do something else, I don't do what I do just on this day, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't see it like that, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, in other words, as someone who ministers the word, sometimes I find myself just reasoning sometimes with somebody just, you know, you know, we're in the store and we yeah. get into it. You know what I mean? We start getting into it. <laughs> that's what, that's what, that's what, see what, that's what, the difference is within the order of Rastafari, uh -uh. reasoning is our discipline. So no matter where we go, we are going to reason with someone. And based on our energy and the frequency that we are giving off, like he says, shine your light so bright that he get the glory. Ones and ones engage you without them knowing they're about to strike a reasoning. Mm, mm, true, 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 true. See? true yeah. and, with, and, and Rastafari brethren and sisters will understand what we're saying because this happened to us all the time. Yeah, that's true. Like sometimes you hear something, somebody say something, and the word come to you, it's 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 nearly impossible not to not to uh, speak on that. Like, it's like, like you're compelled. You're like almost <laughs> exactly like you have to like like either I'm not saying make a correction, but you have to insert something that you just can't let that that word, you know what I mean? Just just just, just be out there like that. You know, you got to save that word, or you have to condemn that word, or you have to put it in a, a better better light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's now true. we have, like we said, the last story we read, how they're running the flock and they're not looking for them and the thing we just speak about there. Now, not only that, you're having people who are talking about burning the Bible and all these kind of things. So I wanted to go in the same same book, Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse, verse 11 to 15. Jeremiah chapter 3? You said 3? Yeah, 11 to 15. Okay, hold on for a moment. Let's see right here. Chapter three. Yeah, you got other people talking about the Bible and this and that and you know a lot of talk about these people ain't real and you can't find this and you can't find that. Okay, let's see right here. Oh, here we go. Okay, uh, okay, we're in chapter three uh, from the verse again. Eleven to oh, yeah. fifteen. I was trying to work around this software, but yeah. Okay, 11 to... Yahweh <coughs> said, <coughs> and Yahweh said to I, said to me, the backsliding Israel, Yisrael, Yasharala, hath justified herself more than treacherous Yehuda. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return. Thou backsliding Israel, Yisrael, saith Yahweh, and I will not cause my anger to fall up on you, for I am merciful. Pause, 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 mm, pause, pause, mm, pause, 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 that's a kind of a salvation type of a repentance type of part, right? Go, yeah, the word return to Shuba, yeah, to, to turn around, turn from the, 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 the astray way to Yahweh. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say return. You know the word return? In the Hebrew sense, like repent. Return, thou backsliding Yisrael, saith Yahweh, and I will not cause mine anger to fall up on you for i am merciful saith yahuwah and i will not keep anger forever only acknowledge acknowledge thine iniquity thy moral perversity that thou hast transgressed against yahuwah thy god i think here is speaking to to israel in the she sense so elohayik Right, and has scattered thy ways to the strangers, yeah, under every green tree, 
and y'all have not obeyed my voice, says Yahweh. Go on. Yeah. Turn. Not the 15, not the turn. Turn. Like return. Repent. Turn. Oh, backsliding children, backsliding son, saith Yahweh, for I am married to you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, to Zion, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to mine heart, whom shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, understanding, and overstanding. Yes, I know. I know most of the time, true, since we start, we've been happening, happening on the, you know, the shepherds, you know, the shepherd and the pastor and the religious hierarchy and their follies, right? But in the teachings, as far as I understand the teachings, especially from the high and certain one, that we as Israel hold that same responsibility as far as making sure that that correct word is being spoken out there. And some of us are parroting a lot of the stuff Aye. that we should not be parroting and adding to these, mm. these, these false doctrines. You know, I call it, I call it, I call it too many of our people, even too many, and I see this to the Rastafari, firstly, right? Is like eating off too many different plates. Yes, it's almost I, like I invite you to a feast. I say, yo, bro, I'm gonna have a feast this this uh this Sabbath uh Eve or, or I'm gonna have a feast, you know? I want the eye to come true, you know what I mean? And so that day you go around and you eat every place, you know what I mean? And then when you come to the feast and then we offer you food, you sit down and you eat and you say, Oh man, this food is messing up your stomach. Right? Now everybody thinks say hey, it's my food that's bad. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? You're the brethren I invited. But they don't know that you went and you was eating all these other places. You see what I'm saying? Then when yeah. you finally eat the good food, you can't take the good food. Because you have too much of the bad food. So, so the brother is saying that a lot of our people and those who are of Yisrael, you know, whether they're of the election, whether they're Rastafari or of other camps, a lot of time be like eating too much here and there. Because... You know what I mean? There's a lot of false shepherd ideologies out there. Even to those of y'all who are just like born again in like Yahuwah and Yahusha. You know what I mean? Be careful, right? Not of your faith and what you desire, but those who are feeding you. You know what I'm saying? For real. For real. The one, these the shepherds out there. You know? <laughs> because notice, these verses that you pointed out, I have brought up the king. Like I was thinking about like, like trying to follow the spiritual irits of, of the flow, of the reasonment. You know, sometimes we start out and we have a specific subject matter. You know what I mean? Other times we might just kind of roll flow and, and the spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit will like guide. You know what I'm saying? And this is like one of those reasonings here. So I went to the suitcase where I have a couple of pictures of the king. You know what I mean? And it's interesting because the verses, remember the verse that talk about how when he get rid of those pastors and shepherds, then he will have his own pastors, right? Yeah. And, the, you know, that will feed them. And then it makes a Davidic connection with a king that will come about. And that verse that, what was it in the previous, was that Jeremiah? The previous quote from Jeremiah what was that 30, 20, was that 20? 23. 23. 23. We're talking about David as David. And this now connects with the second, what people call the second advent, right? Or some was called the return of Christ, or some look at it as, as the return of Jesus. You know, and, and, and part of that I wanted to touch on too. Maybe not in this one right here, but a lot of people are looking for the second coming, dot, 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 of Caesar J. Borgia, uh, of Caesar Jesus Borgia. You know what I mean? What, I was doing a, a little research the other day, I just put something like Yeshua or Jesus or something like that in the search. You know all these Jesus, these these these, these Caesar Borgia pictures, these white Jesus pictures came up, so called. You know, and I was thinking about it. I, no, I, I was looking up a verse in the Bible. I was just looking up a verse, and live the. I just wanted to find you know where it has like the words with some like scenic, you know, nature shot in the background or something, but it was showing like where they superimpose. These these white Jesuses, the the anti the Caesar Borgias, all over the place. You know what I mean? They had this, and when I looked at one picture, I looked at the next, 
like you know when you just look at the pictures by themselves i yeah. had to take a screenshot of it come like look at this crazy th stuff that this picture doesn't look like this picture but the, both of them is a white guy that has a beard and long hair and nobody questions it nobody says wait wait hold on for a moment you know, even their white Jesus don't even look alike, and nobody questioned it. But as soon as we just have a picture, right, of of a, of, of of Yeshua in his humanity as a black man, as an Ethiopian, as a true Israelite, you know, you're not as a true Ethiopians. You know, people all we don't even have to put the words Jesus or Yeshua or Yahweh We don't have to put none of that on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They automatically know, and they say, "Oh, it's not about race. It's not about this." And all these other pictures are just floating out there, so. The whole idea of the second coming of Jesus or Jesus returning again is also a very confused doctrine out there. And it's not the way that they have been leading you to believe. You know, since we're talking about how the, 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 the false shepherds and the faithless shepherds and pastors out there have misled the flock. Even yeah. among those who are into like Christ consciousness coming out of like the churchianity. You know what I mean? And maybe learning from internet and certain ones out there. Some ones might only take you to a certain point. You know what I'm saying? Of your studies. But if you continue, they're going to eat you up. And that's all I want to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can take you to... Because some of, them, some of the basic stuff, like you said, they can only talk to a novice. You know what I mean? They can only talk to a certain novice. And it was interesting, we took my auntie to... Um, what was it? To the... What was it? Penn Station or whatnot. I think she had to catch um, um, the yeah yeah she had to catch the, the the train going back to the Carolinas and everything, and when we came out of there, there was a woman. I saw my my wife was walking with my mother, right, and I was there, you know, kind of like walking just behind them, and you no know, looking around, Madison Square Garden was right over there. I said, wow, I hadn't been out here in a while, and my wife was talking to some woman, and I was like. Is, the woman looked like, like she was Spanish, you know, like Hispanic, or let's say Hispanic. And um, I thought she was speaking Spanish because she know a little Spanish, you know what I'm saying? Um, but then I found out there was an Ethiopian, right? And the woman was like, well, well, well maybe it was like, you know, she, she was trying to like seal up the conversation because we were trying to get a cab and, you know, get back to the, you know, the home and the home office and everything. And um, the woman said, hold on, she started digging her bag. And she gave my wife some of these, these tracks, these religious tracks. And then when we finally negotiated with some Africans, <laughs> you know, cafe and everything, you know, um, want to give, you know, you know, hit up the peoples and everything. We had to spend something, so we spent it with them, and hopefully they would do us right. But I turned around and the woman started to preach. She had a little bull. Did she have a bullhorn? She started to preach the Jesus stuff. On the corner it was an Ethiopian woman. It was actually, you know, an Ethiopian and everything, right? And yes. my wife said something interesting later on. She said, "Oh yeah." Um, she's probably doing that because she might she mind her of this homeless woman that she knows, you know, that she knew like years ago, you know, like somewhere in, in, in New York or whatever. Yeah. And um, sometime what she was saying was that sometime they give them um, like um, like, you know, like you can stay here. You're, you're homeless. You can stay here, but you're going to have to preach this, you know, Caesar J. Borgia stuff. You're going to have to get out there and preach. You know, what I mean, this stuff. So what you were saying was kind of interesting a little bit earlier. You know what I mean? That they only spoke to, like, I heard what, how she was preaching, and I was like, wow. You know what I mean? It was, it was just like, you said it right there, man. I, I'm just going to yield on that, but the way you said it, it reminded me of that. Because um, I ran into a lot of the Ethiopians kind of, like, preaching these other Jesuses. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting. You know, like, um, and, but the level they're preaching it on is, like, you said, like, like a novice, in a sense. You know what I mean? Yes. Or one who just had a bad day or something. Like, if you really had a bad day, you know, you broke up with somebody, you lost your job, you you know, you had the lowest moment, you know, they can hook you into it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But you really don't, you're not really in Yeshua. You're not really in, so you're looking for him, and he's not really in you, so you're looking for him to crack the sky and come back. Because the Bible really teaches that the real coming of Jesus, of Yeshua, Right, is something that was Tawahido, it was a oneness. That those who had received it, they were already living in that. You know what I mean? You could say they were already in that condition that's called heaven. You see what I'm saying? You know, and it was bringing the kingdom of heaven through their life and their liberty. 
because hell is also a condition on earth. You know what I'm saying? These states are states on earth as well. Now, if there is something after this, people say, well, how you know? Okay, if there is something after this, how can you even prepare for whichever one, right, if you don't recognize it here? <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? If your shoe is not already in you, if Christ is not born in you, how are you going to recognize if somebody comes to you and says, 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 you know, I'm Jesus Christ, the return? You're going to get on that cult bandwagon and follow another Caesar J. Borgia impersonator. <laughs> let me transition from that. Let me transition to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to start at um, verse 13. That's the one that says, um, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And being deceived. <laughs> mm, here we go. I got it right there. Uh, second ten. I, I, have heard a, I have heard a lot of different people break down this part right here. This 14 to 17. I've never heard you break it down, so I'm looking forward to this. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I got to find, you know, I, I actually just freezed on a, on a book of Enoch. Because talking about his majesty and the king in the second advent had me go to the book of Enoch momentarily you know what I mean? yeah um but hold on for a moment hold on for a moment i think i got something for this one right here because talking about the evil evil men and seducers now the important thing for everyone just as a rule of thumb you know according if you just want to understand what is the bible what's the true word or the spirit you know the truth of it for yourself you have to recognize that evil is defined the definition of evil is not what we think evil is you know what I mean? We really have to kind of like get in the story, get in the narrative, you know, to understand the context of it, to see whether it makes sense in itself. Because once it makes sense in itself and in yourself, then when you look around, you'll be able to see, you know, your eyes will be open to see what you, you know, what you need to see. But um, let me just find this right here. Let me see. Cause I had something. I had a Pope. I, I thought I had a Pope, um, something on the Pope and everything. Thought I had a suitcase because that's that's where I'm gonna go to because you hit something earlier on, right? You hit something very very powerful, like earlier on. Okay, here 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 yeah. Let me let me get these guys here. I have eight of them. These eight popes. Something very significant the brother hit on because when I talk about the Antichrist, remember in the New Testament, they were talking about the Antichrist was already in the world working even back then. Yes, right. You know what I mean? So think about this. This Antichrist. You say Antichrist is coming, but wait. Were they talking about the Antichrist is coming? Or they already recognize the Antichrist is there? But yeah, there'll probably be a a a, 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 a bigger, better Antichrist that will come later on. You know, learn from the Antichrist predecessors, so to speak. But this verse here, let's get into this verse right here. So we have a little still right there. Because that's the reality of it. I was reasoning with a one about, you know... Um, you know, they're talking about the end times. A lot of people talking about end times because how things are getting rough and COVID came up and the plague and people died and people lose their job and you hear about all sorts of killings, murders, rapes, massacres, all kind of stuff is going on. You know what I mean? From people and people who you probably think that it would not happen from so far and so on. So people are like, Jesus is coming, God is coming soon. And whenever I saw the reason about the reality of the evil workers, they'll talk about the Illuminati. They're talking about the Masons, the Freemasons, and everybody quicker than they will speak about the Pope or what that represents in the big picture of things. You know what I'm saying? But here, in order to put this into perspective, chapter, this particular verse, we have to put the whole chapter into perspective. I'm going to try to go through it at a lively pace, but let me um, here get my study reference here, you know? And I really will hope that ones and ones get the Schofield for a moment because it can help us to catch up a lot of us should have already known this like years ago you know what i mean you know this is the basic knowledge that they should be teaching you know the only ones that really go through this kind of teaching this level of teaching and discipline with the youths and their people is some of the orthodox like like jews and others and people say well look at they they control this and that and such and such well it's because you kind of understand the matrix i won't put it like that you know what i mean you begin yeah. to understand the matrix. So let's go to 2 Timothy, that verse 13. Let's first just touch on this right here for a moment. This know also that in the last days, 
Now the last days, that's a, you know, the end days, you know, the end times. Now this all goes back to the Old Testament sense of the last days. And the last days was the last days, people say the earth and heaven, everything is going to go up and a poof or whatever. But no, it's not talking about none of that. It, from a Hebrew perspective, as Timothy and others were Hebrews, Jews, and Israelites, and they were also faithful in Yeshua, they understood it as the prophets taught it. In other words, it's not like Yeshua is coming to contradict the prophets. No, he's come to establish that word that the faithful before even understood, that the whole world will come under these different kingdoms, like these four kingdoms. And the, and the, we start, start at 12. Verse 12? Yes, yeah, start at 12. Okay, okay. I'm going to scan over these verses right here. I'm just going to open with the first verse and I'm going to scroll forward to verse 12. This know also that in the last days. So the, I'm going to get this point here. The last days would be the last days of a certain government and system. You remember in the verse we read from earlier and the shepherds were talking about they're scattered all over the mountains? Yes. The mountains in the scripture is a, can have a symbol in prophetic Hebrew language for governments and kingdoms. Right? I, don't, I don't want to point that out, that we're living under other kingdoms. Like Israel was supposed to be running this, you know, and the righteous nations. But because Israel has failed and all that that we have in the Bible, even up to the time of Yeshua, that it came under the Roman system. And we're still under this Greco-Roman world system. So when they talk about the new world order or the end of the world order, they're trying to change something. This system is not sustainable. So this is what the last days mean, right? Perilous times shall come. So let's scroll up to verse 12. That my brother in said, boom, here we go, yay, right? Now we scrolled over about, uh, about, 10, uh, 10, 10, about 10 verses to get right here. Yay, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus, or in the Moshiach, Yeshua, shall suffer persecution. I was just sharing this verse with some fam, right? That because they're like newborns in a sense and the, the faith is sincere, but sometimes ones have to recognize that it's not all the lovely things that, 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 that new birth, like the new birth in Christ, if it's sincere, we'll find that even anger and different things the Lord will take from us. You know what I mean? So that we, we get strength over certain things. But then at the same time, there's a persecution that comes in. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times Christians are not prepared or people of God, even with this Bible, are not prepared, right, for the persecution that they will suffer as they seek to live godly. Because what happens initially is that the, 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 the Almighty will, how can I say, empower us, right, with the good experiences in our soul. You know what I mean? This is what a lot of people who get born again, you know, they may seem to be overzealous. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they almost get high, you know what I mean, with Yeshua. You know what, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. that helps them overcome a lot of things and begin to change their life. But then as their life begins to change and they come from under the, the yoke of, 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 of Satan or Satan, the satanic system of things, the spirit and the men and people, people are going to kick back. And here's where they're going to suffer persecution. They're going to be like, listen, I used to be a, a drunkard. I used to be a fornicator. I used to be this. I used to do that. I used to be a robber, a thief, a gunman or whatever. And I put that away, right? Because of Yeshua, because of the, the Messiah, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But what they don't recognize is that others are still under the power of the Satans. They're still under the power of the spirit of the, you know, of the God of the world system. And you're going to suffer persecution. It doesn't mean that those good things you experience, you won't receive them no more. But those good things must empower you. You know what I mean? To en endure the persecution. Verse 13. But evil men, right? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Now, wax is the old time English word that basically means to beat forward, to go forward, to be like to, to you know how you lengthen something out by hammering something? Yeah. That's what it means, like to promote, to go forward, to proceed forward or to stretch something out. But the literal meaning from the Greek even here is like to drive something forward as if by beating something. You know, you're beating something. So the evil men are going to keep on beating on their old evil beating track more and more, harder and harder. It's like what we see going on. 
what we see going on on many different you know on many different levels you know things are getting so-called from bad to worse and as soon as we think it can't get any worse than that we find out something else right the the the, the, the worst is like an aggravated sense and the aggravation is not just a physical aggravation it can be a mental aggra aggravation or even a moral aggravation right deceiving and being deceived you see they're deceiving others being the evil the evil doers the evil men and people but they also are being deceived why because they're thinking right whether they're in the church or out the church but i think that a lot of this here was talking about ones in the church see a lot of people will say this verse is just in the world right but this is speaking about those who were in the world but also those that crept into the church right because they will be deceiving like the past and the rest of them the lord told me get a get a new jet not even an old jet or another jet but a new jet and everything everybody go and give it to them and and, they, and you, know, you know what i'm saying he yeah. is he deceived the people right he's been deceiving the people these false shepherds faithless shepherds but they're also being deceived because they think that because they say the lord said this and they get what they want what their hearts desire you see what i'm saying they begin to believe that it must be good with the Lord. Most of these fake pastors and preachers out there, even the popular mega church preachers, you know, it's on the YouTubes and elsewhere where they've said some crazy stuff. They said a lot of crazy stuff. And they didn't get struck dead. You, know, you remember that old time way? Or oh, the Lord, God strike me down if I'm lying. You know what I mean? And, and we look at the person and we say, that we know you're lying. But we don't get to see them struck down because we believe in God. So we think that maybe they got away with it. But they begin to think, they deceived us, but they begin to think that God permits that. You see what I'm saying? And this is part of the process that makes them go on and do worse and worse things. The evil men and seducers. You know, they will get worse and worse. You know what I mean? I mean, really just look around, man, at the news. Come on now. You know what I mean? Come on. I mean, I mean, some of the... But, you know, so this part right here, it actually sums up, right? This verse, verse 13, 12, and 13, it sums up those 10 verses that we had just kind of flew over, right? You know, we flew over those 10 verses. God was talking about, like, you know, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that one should not love themselves, but the sense is that men will only love themselves. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It says right. love your brother, right, as yourself, your neighbor as yourself, right? It says love, I'm supposed to, you're my brother, I'm supposed to love the I as I love myself. So that means I got to have some love. Okay, love for yourself. Exactly. But, so here it's saying for men shall be lovers of their own selves. This, that's the letter of the word. The spirit of it is like they will only be loving themselves. That's why they're covetous, right? They see you for new car. They don't know what you had to go through to get that car or how you had to work or whatever else, save up, whatever. But they were like, what you doing with that car? They see you with that woman. They'll say, what you doing with that woman right there? You know what I mean? You see, because they love themselves. See, you know what I mean? If you love your neighbor as you love yourself and then you, you, you eye in his stuff, covetous, something, if you still have your soul, will be like, wait, 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 what, what, what the hell? You know what I mean? What the hell? You know, get behind me, Satan. You know what I'm saying? Boasters. Right. Boasters. Those who only love themselves, they boast this. It's only like they're blinded. It's like they are deceived and they deceive themselves. And because there's nothing to stop them, because they're in that blindness. That's why it talks about he will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Yo, go to Psalm 125 for a moment. We just had that. That, that brings out this psalm here and the judgment. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that means they have no discipline. You know, that's what they told, this about OCBs and other things. A lot of these things begin very small, like, like a little seed, like a little mustard seed. Fierce, despisers of them that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of Elohim. But the worst part is this, having the form of godliness. You see that? But denying the power thereof. See, they think by preaching the, the, the false shepherds in the name, right? And I'll say almost whichever name they might claim, right? But preaching in the name based on this power here. 
testified in this book, right? But they deny the power. You see what I'm saying? Because how can they be evil seducers, right? And then be deceiving themselves, think they're good doers. I mean, don't you see the rich be doing that a lot of times? The the evil rich. I, I don't want to say the rich. They're just the rich. We shouldn't just condemn the rich because they're rich. But the evil rich. Who you got evil poor too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, from such it says turn away. Notice what it says. It didn't say go and try to psychoanalyze them. Did it say that? Did it say of such sit down and, and psychoanalyze them, right? No. Now, if they come forward and say, listen, I got a problem, man. You know, I need help. You know what I mean? You know, then you might have an opportunity, right, to bring them to, you know, to bring them to, to the truth. You know what I'm saying? But for you to now get mixed up in that, you're going to get caught up in their web. You see what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Because, because you talk about the love of God, right? They're going to think that God only loves them, man. For real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've encountered this kind of spirit even among Christians. No, I've, I have. It's the buggest, it's the buggest thing, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the strangest thing. Psalm 125, the, the, the judgment for these and those. If you can go to Psalm 125, I think people would chant this psalm. Some of us may chant this psalm. Those that trust, it's the one that says, those that trust in the Lord, that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. And I think one of the quotes had touched on Zion, right? Those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, that abideth forever. Here we go right here. A song of degrees. Ain't no degrees, all right? When, you, when, when you're going up in the, when you're going up, well, you can only go up, well, you can go down in degrees, but in this sense, it's going up in degrees, going to a higher degree, right? The song of degrees. This is what they should be singing in churches instead of those goofy songs. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> crackhead R&B gospel. They that trust in Yahuwah shall be as Mount Zion. That cannot be removed but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so Yahuwah is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Now here's, here's the verses. These verses here. I got to know this song because the Rastafari elders... Right, that I got called forward to when I and I tried it. You know, they used to chant this. And so whenever we used to chant it, you know, we're chanting and so forth and so on. But then later on, I would reason on it. And this psalm here. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest, you see that word? Lest, like unless. Lest the righteous put forth their hands to iniquity. Pause on this for a moment. It says that the rod of the wicked, the rod, you know, the rod can have a twofold sense. You know, a rod to beat somebody, and then the rod in a symbolic sense, like a rulership. You know what I mean? You know, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot. You know, that which is your lot. You know, that which is, you know, like, 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 you know, your part. You know, the part of the righteous, that which belongs to the righteous. Lest is to say, unless the righteous put forth their... Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. So righteous people can put forth their hands to iniquity. That's why in Peter it says the righteous is scarcely saved. If the righteous is scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and wicked appear? If, if it's hard, if the righteous can barely be saved, right? I'm, I'm going to Peter in the New Testament just on the theme of righteous. If the righteous is scarcely, like, like with great difficulty, the righteous can be saved. The righteous, you know what I'm saying? Nice. See, people have this false sense of right. Righteous is like right now. If you ask me, have I been a, have I been convicted of a crime? Right? I can say no. So that that means that technically I'm I'm not a criminal, right? There's some who have been convicted of crimes, then they have that on their record, so they're they're a criminal, right? Right? But there, aren't there many people who have not been convicted of a crime, and they technically are righteous? Right? But but they have done crime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it says, lest the righteous put forth their hands to iniquity, which is moral perversity. Lewis says, do good, O Yahuwah, O Jehovah, to those that be good. Look what it says. Do good to those that be good. I thought people say he do good to everybody. Right? I heard people say the, the Lord God of the Bible do good to everybody. Here it says, do good. O Jehovah, 
to those that be good. But then, but then some people tell you there's nobody good. See, they be mixing up and twisting verses. They be taking verses totally out of the context. You know what I mean? Because they look at the letter, but they don't have the spirit. And to them that are upright, look at that, upright in their hearts. You see what I'm saying? So you know how the wicked and evil seduces? Because some good may happen, but they think that it happened based on their evil doing. Therefore, they think that their evil doing is doing good. You see what I'm saying? That's how they deceive. They, they're deceiving others, but they're deceiving themselves. This last verse is the, I'll say is the killer. Because it says, thou should not murder. So this is the killer verse, right? As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways. The Rasta Bible always used to say, to their crook-hearted ways. Jehovah shall lead them forth. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. So those who are, who are turning aside to the crooked ways. According to this psalm, Psalm 125, verse 5, Jehovah, he who be who he be, the Almighty, will do what? What will he do? He's going to lead them forth. Like, come come over here. Like, come out of here. Come, come. Let me lead you forth out of here with the workers of iniquity. All right? So we say, Jah is our shepherd. All right? But in this case, he is leading these crooked ones forth with the workers of iniquity. But it says, but peace shall be upon Israel. Now, you get the big picture? How is Israel going to have peace unless those who are of Israel but not Israel are taken out of the way? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It says, says, not all who are of Israel are Israel. You remember that, right? That's New Testament. Not all those who are of Israel. Right? So it goes back right here to the rod of the wicked should not rest upon the lie of the righteous unless the righteous put forth their hands to iniquity. Right? And then it says, for such who turn aside to their crooked ways, Jehovah is going to lead them forth from his flock. It's going back to what you was showing in the verses about the shepherds and the pastors. Right? You know, where he's going to intervene in this and he's going to take these faithless shepherds and pastors away. And then he's going to appoint his own ones. But by taking away the fake ones, the pseudo ones, you know what I mean? That's how Yisrael will have shalom. Remember what Yeshua said? My peace, I don't give it, his peace is not like the world peace. It's not like the world peace, but it's a sword. You see what I'm saying? So to save his flock, right, he will lead the, the, those who have, the, those who are the workers of iniquity. And see, the workers of iniquity... In this context here are some of the righteous who may have been righteous, but now they put forth their hands to iniquity. You know what that verse reminds me of? It reminds me of the so-called mark of the beast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it shows like his majesty says how slash the first. He says that peace is not an is. It's a becoming. becoming. It's based on decisions that are being made. Because even Ezekiel, I think, talks about when a righteous man then turns aside and does wickedness, all his righteousness should not account to him for nothing. So, like, if I'm a righteous, we're righteous men, we're doing righteousness, but then we decide, oh, we're going to turn aside to folly. You know what I'm saying? All of our righteousness that we did, it really don't, don't matter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, David wasn't saved because of the righteousness that he had done before he had, he had turned aside and done it, that was grace there, you know, because Yahweh already had his, you know, already had his sight set on the Davidic lineage. <laughs> Where I finish that, that Second Timothy there. Second Timothy, Second Timothy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me yeah, go. Yeah. Let me go back. What wax worse and worse? Okay, here we go. Okay, it says here. here so, verse fourteen. But continue. 14. But continue. Fourteen. But continue thou in the things that thou has learned and has been assured of, always faithful, always sure, knowing of whom thou has learned them, and that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures that are able to make thee wise to salvation through faith. That is in the Messiah Yeshua. Through faith, the faith that is in the Messiah Yeshua. All scripture is given by the inspiration of Elohim. And is profitable 
for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You want to break that one down? You want to stop and break that one down before you do 17 and break all down 16? Scripture. Yeah, all scripture is given by the inspiration by the spirit of Elohim. Because Moshe was the reputed first author. Of course, there were ancient fragments before that. We talked about that, the Enochian fragments and Moses fragments. I mean, I mean um, Noah's fragments. So there were, you know, writings that were passed on. But we know Moses had that inspiration. Even Enoch had the inspiration. You know what I mean? Um, we also know that the you know, books that came after Joshua was a chosen man. That's the next book after the five books. So as we go through the scriptures, we can see that these are ones who were inspired, right? And in their inspiration, they both um, revealed the words and the prophecies of Yahweh, of the Almighty of Jehovah, as well as they revealed other important information for the righteous. Like it says, it's profitable, right? Beneficial for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction. So some things we read in the Bible that are not very, people say very good, you know, there's the good, the bad, the good and the beautiful and the bad and the ugly, you know, there. but that's also for reproof, for like correction and for reproof, you know, like rebuke, right? Reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness. In other words, Yeshua imparts, Father God, according to the new covenant, imparts, righteousness through our faith in Yeshua right according to you know the new covenant and as his message as it is written he imparts that so that righteousness that he's imparts to us is like also like a free gift so we have his righteousness not our own righteousness but we have his righteousness and part of that working out right of our salvation as it says in the verse before let me just go to the verse before these verses right here are key verses because it's to continue Right? Remember what his master says about the Ethiopian official called the eunuch? He says, and from that day on, Ethiopia continued in the way of Christ. So, but thou continue, right, in the things which thou hast learned. So it teaches us that even to be a Christian, as one would say, or Nazarene, more better, follower of Yeshua, we have to learn, right? And we also have to be assured of what we are learning. Because you can learn something, like I've learned things that, when well, I say I'm not sure about it, it's not things that I would do because uh, I've learned, like, you know, I've learned how the bad person did the bad thing. But I'm not confident in that. You know, I'm confident victory yeah. the good over the evil. But concerning these things, what we learn, we have to kind of double check it, right? And we have to know, right? A lot of times Christians always talk about believe, 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 believe. But it's like that belief or credit or faith is what kind of gets you in the door, right? And then you have to now learn and grow in grace and the knowledge knowing of whom thou hast learned them you know and that from a child now this is the key thing right here because this was what paul was saying to to timothy paul was like timothy's like teacher in a hebraic sense like his kind of rabbi on a level but in the new covenant sense was like his teacher in a sense you know and so um timothy was timothy had a mother timothy was like bob marley Timothy had a mother who was a Jewess or like a Yehudit, like, a, like a, a, a daughter of Judah, you know, like one of our people. And his father was like a Gentile, you know, some things that maybe was a Roman, whatnot. But there was prophecies that his mother pronounced on Timothy, right? And then Timothy, he got with the Nazarenes and he got with Paul. So Paul, he kind of knows of his background. Okay? Paul even hails up Timothy's mother in another letter. You know, um, but he says from a child. So now this is directly speaking to Timothy himself. But we're going to learn something from this. That from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Because his mother was very much into the faith. You know what I mean? And kind of raised her child right. right? Even though her husband was not a, a Hebrew or a, a, a Yehudi, like a Jew. Right? But he was a Gentile. Right? But he had known the scriptures from being a child. Now, here's the important thing for most of us. Most of us probably will be like, well, when I was young, I didn't really learn or I went to church or I didn't really learn like I'm learning now. But that's why the Bible says, and the, and the Master, Yeshua says, you must be what? Born again. And, yeah, if, yeah. and if you're born again, I'm saying born again as matters pertaining to faith and your soul and your spirit and your consciousness. As matters of faith, you can still be as a child 
right? In your new birth in the Moshe Yeshua, it's the glory of Elohim the Father, right? And still take care of grown folks' things, you know what I'm saying? In your regular life, but in your study. So even though he's speaking to Paul, he, uh, Paul is speaking to Timothy here specifically, we can learn, well, man, I didn't learn the scripture. I was a child, not like Timothy did, but if you're born again, as the master says. And these are able, now once you know the scriptures, so he's telling Timothy, you already had an advantage because you had known the scriptures from a child, right? And these are able to make you wise to salvation. Note that wording. You have to become wise to salvation. You can't be foolish to salvation. Right? The Father could extend his grace all he wants. He does what he pleases. But the basic principle is you must be wise to salvation. Don't depend on the grace because you might fall from it. Right? In that sense. But you must be wise to salvation. Right? Through faith that is in Christ Yeshua. Now, a lot of people will say this means through having faith in the Messiah Yeshua. Some of us look at this as having that faith of Yeshua. And it was the same faith that he has in a good loving father is the same faith that we should have in a good loving father. Because he took on our flesh, you know, our humanity, as the gospel says, he took this on for our sake. He's the last Adam. You know what I mean? So we follow him to become a better man right in the fullness right of 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 you know the fullness of the of the word of the prophecy through faith that is in christ yeshua so some people have faith in jesus but from my reading of the scripture we're supposed to have the faith of yeshua if, if you get me a lot of yeah. things that he was doing was to show us how to handle certain things from from the you could say from the from the psychological the soul and the spirit perspective so when he's saying all of this right here to Timothy, right, to be wise to salvation through faith in the Messiah Yeshua. And he puts Christ before Yeshua because he's now pointing to that, that office, that authority. Yes, he's Yeshua of Nazareth, right? But even he has now gone up in degrees, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all scripture is given by the inspiration of Elohim. So when I said about the scripture, it was talking in this context right here in Timothy of the Hebrew Bible. And I'm not dismissing the New Covenant scriptures, right? But in the context of what's written here in 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, verse 16, it was speaking of the Hebrew scriptures. Because they, they're quoting all, all, all from it, all up and down. And they're referring to it's the context of what the Nazarenes, the true Christians, were speaking. They were speaking in perfect context with the Old Covenant. And they were drawing from it. Why? Because they knew that all scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim. So what they saw in Yeshua and was revealed to them in Yeshua, they backed up that by the scripture. As Yeshua himself backed up what he did and what he showed to them and demonstrated to them by scripture. So the scripture is given by the inspiration. It doesn't mean that everything in there is a testimony of Elohim. But the whole thing is a testimony. You could say to Elohim, but he has his own testimony according to what is written. Thus saith, thus saith the Lord. So we accept that based on the witness that's given. We're just looking at the evidence. And it's profitable for doctrine. This is very important. We could break this down maybe a little bit more, but going through each one of these to understand how I wanted to go through them. I wanted to go through the doctrine, the, the reproof, the correction. I wanted to go through that. Because I, I, I've been looking forward to hear you break this down. Okay, well, profitable. Profitable basically is to say helpful, serviceable, or advantageous. Like to say beneficial. Right? It's helpful. It's serviceable. It's advantageous. That means if you deny the scripture, you put yourself at a disadvantage. You know what I'm saying? You know? Um, so it, all of it is profitable for doctrine. So let's deal with the doctrine first. Doctrine here is didascalia. The word didascalia. And basically, it's a word that means teaching or instruction. Te like precepts, right? It's a noun feminine, right? And here they have instruction, the function, or the information, right? This word sometimes is translated as learning, doctrine, or teaching. So this here is like learning, doctrine, or teaching. Doctrine just basically means teaching. It's just a word from, more from the Greek, you know, 
a little bit from the Greek right there. And then it says for reproof. Reproof, right? Here we have um, elegos, elegos, elegos here. A proof. Reproof is actually from, we're going from the Greek first, right? Is a, is a proof that by which a thing is proved or tested. We'll find that the Hebrew and even them hark will back this up. But we'll touch on that after this. A proof. So a reproof is actually like, you know how we say redo or return? Right? Yeah. You turned, and then I say return, so you turn again. Right? So it's a proof. We have proof, maybe, but now the scripture can be a proof, a, another proof. A proof of, by which we can test a thing. Right? We can, it's also the sense of conviction. Right, the reproof is also the conviction. Like, like I heard his Majesty say something that he says something like, "We've been convicted," right? And he was saying like, "Convicted of the faith of Yeshua HaMoshiach." You know what I mean? And in that sense, like we have the proof, we have tested this. You know, we have put this to the test. We have manifestation. So it's basically, in a real sense, it's not just belief, belief as many Christians would tell you. But from that basic belief and that and that credit, that faith, you are growing in experiential. You're experiencing. It's evidence. The scripture becomes the evidence, you know, of the teaching, of the principles that are beneficial. And for correction. Now, correction here, right, is this word, what, um, epo, epon, or, epano, epano, eponorthosis, eponorthosis. Eponothosis, right? Eponothosis, right? And that basically means restoration to the to an upright or a right state. In other words, correction. So it's going to the very root. Like we have this idea of correction, bro. I corrected you, yeah. But in the sense, it's getting back to the root of, like, so, you know, like you have, like, you ever had a bike and you get and you get part of the frame bent. That ever happen? Like on a bike and the frame get bent. And you yeah. have to you have to make it right again. You have to like straighten it out. That's the yeah. sense of correction, straightening something out or restoring something from being maybe bent to being upright. Correction in the sense of improvement of a life or character. That the scripture can help us to correct or improve life or character. I mean, studying that whole David incident that 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 did it for for I it still does it. You know what I mean? You know, could you? You get from that incident of someone else's bad or wrong choice. You know what I mean? Right. As you study it, you begin to see things that you can, that you can not just take away, but take in. You know what I mean? To help correct or improve your life or improve your liberty, as we would say. But, but correction is straightening up again, right? Correcting, reforming something. Correction, right? And then we have instruction. Now here, um, padeia. Padea. Now, now, remember the first word that we touched on? It seemed to have in it. Here's how you break down even the 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 Strongs. Didascalia, didascalia, and there's the Ethiopic didascalia. Just to put that on the table. Teaching instruction, right? Teaching instruction. So we have the word instruction here, right? In a sense of basic teaching and learning, like the function or the information, the basic. The doctrine is like the basics, you know, it's like, it's like the basics. But then when we get to, okay, let me get back here. Let me get back here again. Hold on for a moment. My thing just, my thing just went on to personal, personal notes right here. Hold on for a moment. Okay, here we go. Yeah, excuse me, brothers and sisters. When you get to this word right here, instruction, how is instruction different from doctrine? When we go to the definition, it's the whole training. The whole training, like the education of children. The doctrine is like the basic kind of like, um, how can I say? You, you know, the basics of the faith. You know, kind of like the one, two, threes, you know, like the simple one, two, threes, the basics. You know, but now when you get to the instruction, you're now getting into the details of those basic, those basic subjects, those basic categories. It's the whole training. The edu but it relates to the word padia. Because it's a Greek word, it relates to children, right? Remember being as a child again? Which relates to the cultivation of the mind. Cultivating the mind, cultivating the morals. It's almost like 
your consciousness becomes like a garden <laughs> and you are like a gardener. You remember Adam in the beginning? Remember Yeshua yeah. later on? In that sense of cultivating your mind, your morals, employs for this purpose now commands and admonishes, now reproof and punishment. In other words, when you're in the instruction, sometimes you're going to command yourself to do things. And at other times, you're going to admonish yourself. You're going to say to say yourself, yay, yay. And other times you'll say, nay, nah, nah. Right? Sometimes you're going to reprove yourself. You're going to find that proof to check yourself. And at other times, you might punish yourself, if you know what I'm saying. I'm not talking about no crazy stuff, but I'm saying, you know, to punish, to correct yourself. Because you got to know yourself. Right? If you're going to improve yourself. Otherwise, you fall off the way and you get caught up in the bushes. It also includes the training and care of the body. Right? In other words, people think that the, like this belief in Yeshua or Christ Jesus, justice, is just like a spiritual thing of nice platitude. You say nice, friendly thing. Jesus love you. God love you all the time and all this kind of stuff. No. It really involves a discipline. Right? Whatever in adults also cultivates the soul. So now for those who are now grown, as you're growing, now you have to also cultivate your soul. Like for a child, the first thing is the basics of the body, the discipline of the body. You know, that's why it points to certain things like even fornication and other areas. I'm not saying that we as, as human beings or as men don't have desires, Right? But we have to begin to check those desires. And we first begin to check them by knowing that this is right and that is wrong. Even if you're doing such and such, it's best for you to say, I know this is wrong right here. Lord, I got to have it. Help me. You know what I'm saying? This is how we kind of... So by all of this that the scripture shows us, we see examples of others, right? From the old covenant to the new. Especially correcting mistakes and curbing passions. Remember how his majesty speaks? Correcting mistakes and curbing passions. See, some people think because they have desire, like say, you know, you have desire, like a man, a woman have desire. The desire is good. What you have to do is put a curb on it. It's like it's like a dog or whatnot. You got to put a leash on it and pull it. Hey, 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 sit, sit. You know what I mean? But see, in the counterfeit Christianity and Catholicism has some wild rights where they start to punish themselves in some crazy ways. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, but instruction which aims at increasing virtue, right? So on one hand, instruction is those things that helps you to increase your strength, your spiritual strength, virtuous strength, right? Like not just strength, like physical strength, but you have strength to say, man, that look good, but I'm not going there. I know where that lead to. You know what I mean? Some of them don't have, some of them don't have the strength for it because like Van singing a song, he said, you know, like you don't morally corrupt. <laughs> there you go. And that's what the instruction, the doctrine, the reproof, the correction, and the instruction helps us to do is first of all to understand what right morals is. You know, what is right. Not based on what people have done to us or what we've done to other people or any of those other things, but just what is right. Because even somebody who go around robbing and stealing will tell you, man, I, I needed this, but, but they, they, they know what they did was wrong. Yes. You know what I mean? You know, but, but, but they felt they had to do it. But even there, that's why, even why Yeshua hung out with the sinners. Think about it for a moment. Why he was around certain kind of people and even some of them were able to repent easier. You understand? Because they already knew what they were doing. They wasn't like the, the evil and the seducers and the false shepherds in the past. You know what I mean? Hey. Those who deceive themselves. They recognize, yes. You know, yeah, like right. you know, like that woman that came to Yeshua. She was a Gentile woman, and he says, like, it's not right to give the children's food to to dogs. And she, she oh, said, man. she said, truth, Lord, but the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. Yes. The table. yes. <laughs> so she understood. She knew herself, and, and he said, to, what did he said to her, he says, I heal you. I ask God the Father to heal your daughter. No, he said, your faith. Look, yes. look, look at the power of that. Your faith. Where the Messiah who goes around healing and healing ones said to this woman who was not of his nation that even her faith, because she had faith in him and she had, your faith has healed her. Look at that. Not Yeshua healing her, but your faith in I, after I tell you, yo, this ain't for you, 
you you then say that that even the crumbs the, the dogs get could they fall off the table your faith has healed your yeah. daughter <laughs> but her faith but um verse 17 explain her faith ah uh, hold on for one moment because the second part of the instruction is chastisement or chastening now here they say that chastening is sometimes the evils or the ills with which Elohim visits men for their amendment. Now this is often a hard thing for ones to take based on the type of God they believe the, the real God of the Hebrew scriptures and of Yeshua really is. Sometimes he will allow, see evils is not always a religious evil. It's, it's just that which is not good. That which is bad, that's what is sad, that which is hurtful, that which is harmful, right? He may allow those things, right? Because sometimes we only learn by experience. I don't know if one's over is what I'm saying. Sometimes we only learn. How many times somebody has told you something and you heard it? Like some old wisdom of the elders. And you're like, yeah, 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 granny. Yeah, 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 grandpa. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. You're always talking that. And then you have experience and you're like, yo, granddad was right. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like Elohim allowed that experience to happen. I mean, you were saved through it. But you had to experience something that made that teaching now real. It's not just a teaching in somebody's mouth, a saying they quote, but it's something that you can testify to. So yeah. education or instruction here is tutorage. Education or training. It's disciplinary correction. So all these are aspects that is speaking about in the New Testament that the early Christians, the Nazarenes, they wasn't just people just talking about they love Jesus and they believe in the Lord, but they also was improving their own life and liberty and one another, iron sharpening iron by being in these scriptures, right? And living their life. You know what I'm saying? Learning the reality of the You know what I mean? The two go together. You know, because this is what instructs them. All of this is leading to righteousness. So saying that righteousness is not, is not an easy thing like people think. Oh, I'm righteous. No, it's not. Because all of this, notice how the whole sentence, it pours down to in righteousness. Everything in the sentence, all scripture is given by the inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness. So all scripture, right, is profitable in righteousness, but then it breaks it down. For this, for this, and notice it's four main things. Like a yes. cross, four things. Doctrine, teaching, reproof, proof, evidence, correction, making straight, you know, making right what is crooked, so to speak, and instruction, getting the full education, that full discipline. That the man of Elohim, that's interesting. You know who was called man of Elohim? Who we began off with? Moshe. Moshe in Psalm 90 is called, it says, was a prayer of Moses, the man of God, or the Ish Ha Elohim, that the man of Elohim, this is like one of the highest things, like to be a man or woman of Elohim, right? That the man of Elohim, right, may be perfect. Now you hear people say there's nothing perfect, but we, we'll touch on that. Thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished to all good works. This is an interesting one right here. That the, so all of that beforehand leads to one truly being a man of, of, of God, as they say. Now, how many times the false pastors and preachers and shepherds are called men of God? All the time. You know what I mean? And then you hear about something, right? And very few of them, as soon as you hear about something, say, yeah, Oh, God, forgive me. I was wrong. No, they make all bunch of excuses. <laughs> no, that the man of Elohim may be perfect. Now, perfect is an interesting, perfect means like complete. Like, how can I say? It's almost like um, you, you're the carpenter or you're the plumber. And somebody said, you got your tools. They say, oh, no, 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 no. You're not perfect. You don't have your tools. You know, so if you have your tools and you know how to do the job and you're ready, you're you're perfect for the job. You see what I'm saying? People have this wrong idea of perfect. Like, a, it's a special aptitude for giving usage, right? Basically, the sense in, in the, even the Hebrew sense is like to be complete. To be complete. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. You know what I mean? That means like... Um, 
fully that's equipped. Basically, like the woman, like the same thing. You just example the woman you just spoke about who came to, to like the Messiah about her, like our child. Her, her explanation about that even the dog eat the scraps off of the master's table showed <laughs> the perfection in her feet. Ah, uh, that she wasn't offended because really, that I don't know how y'all see it. But I see that Yeshua is being bold. He, he he calling her basically a B word, like in modern day, one yeah. can true from that. And she's like, "Truth, Lord, I'm a dog. I mean, compared to the children of Israel, like you know, she was a Canaanite or a Syrian Phoenician, some woman. She humbled herself. She humbled herself, and then he turned to her and said, "Your faith, All right? Her faith did it. It's her. And not only humble herself, she humbled herself with morality." Mm. Because I think of what she said mm. It's powerful what she said you know, Even the dog eat the scraps off of the master's table Just give me a little something Lord She's like just give me a little something I'm not trying to replace the children I know the children come first That's that's what the whole gospel of the New Testament Is about Yeshua and Israel If, if you think about it And it's about Yeshua and Israel For the salvation of the world See, people said that Yeshua would come to save the world. Yes, in the, in that sense, because he came to save Israel. You know what I'm saying? And, and Israel, in that sense, in a proper relationship with the Almighty, right, is the salvation of the world. In other words, that's why he said this, I, it's not right to give the children the bread to dogs. That's what the Bible tells, her, tells us that she was a Canaanite, a Syrian Phoenician, a Syrian Phoenician woman. You know what I'm saying? It tells us right there that she wasn't a member of the nation. Right? And not saying that 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 the Almighty is not her creator, nothing like that. But he was saying to her there's an order of it. And she knew, like you said, she knew her place in that particular order. You know? And that is what gave the green light. You know that Yeshua, you know Yeshua had a part, him and the father, they had a part in in, in, in that healing. You know that, right? Oh yes, oh yes. But it was not an overt thing like he would do with the Israelites. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, with the Israelites, he would be that good shepherd. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, you, you know, like, like that I was saying about the good shepherd. The good shepherd would go and seek the sheep. Sheep, yeah. You know what I mean? He lay hands on. Clock, he'd be all personal. Yeah, look for that clock, yeah. You know, like a doctor, he make house calls. He make those house calls. Yeah. You know, but he was like saying to the the, the woman, "I'm not on that." That's not what we're doing here. And she said, like, truth, but, you know, even the dogs get something. You're not going to, you're not going <laughs> to. And his majesty does love dogs, right? You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> that the man. Let, uh, let me jump forward here into a book that most people don't, don't even go in, really. And it's only one page. We're going into Titus. Okay, Titus. Yeah, right, yeah, right over. Next page over. Okay. And we're going to go from 10. We're going to go from 10. And okay. close it out. What, what, verse 10? Yeah, from 10. Start at 10. The chapter 1? Yeah, chapter 1, verse 10. And we just finish out the chapter. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially, especially, <laughs> especially, not especially, but especially, they of the circumcision. Explain to them who that is before we go any further. Uh, that, um, hold on for a moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I don't have them up here again. Yeah, that, that uh, Yehudi, that's, okay. the, you say the Jews, that, that's, that's to say us, that's Yehuda. All right, okay. You know, that's why to clarify that to the people. You know, that's uh, black American. No. <laughs> gotcha. You know, among the, among the, uh, hold on for a moment, among the, yeah, uh, what, which one was it, which one was it? Hold on, folks, hold on, folks, right here, yeah, yeah, especially they of the circumcision, you know what I mean? Yeah, those who were circumcised, remember Peter was sent to the circumcision, you know, Peter was sent to the circumcision, and, um, um, Paul was sent to the uncircumcised, you know, to the uncircumcised. Okay, 
um, I must have flew over the suitcase right here, you know, but be that as it may, right? We'll keep this right here. So here it says, yeah, so the circumcision, especially those of the circ so for there are many, there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth, mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake one of themselves even a prophet of their own <laughs> said the Cretans right, are always liars evil beasts slow bellies this witness is true wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound or healthy in the faith not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth you want me to pause here for a moment yes 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 okay that would this would this would have been good if i could have that picture right here hold on for let a me moment say something real quick okay when you do that let me say something real quick when you do that now we start off this thing talking about the um the shepherd, you know, which we know the priests, you know, the religious hierarchies, you know, those that are supposed to feed us correct doctrine. And most of the time when we burn out these people, we are burning out the Gentiles, you know, the Catholic Church and the Pope and, you know, a lot of these religious orders, whatever denomination they speak, you know, these are the things we burn out a lot of times. But what this is telling you right here is we got some cleaning inside the house. <laughs> you know, yeah, we you know we need some some swifter dusters and things inside the house, you know, to get some of these these um vain talkers and deceivers, you know, out of the house. So go ahead, my lad. Yeah, there there, there was a few that I was gonna I, I was gonna make mention, but we can we can yeah yeah we can we, we can save that for that um. Yes, 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 the yes. Know name, man. The people know the name, man. people know the name. All right, so right here, right here is an interesting verse right here. This verse right here. Um, so, okay, okay, this is, this is, this is interesting right here. Okay, I'm going to use this one right here. Okay, Jew, right, whether organic or GMO, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Jew, all right, so... Here in Paul's time, now this is this is actually speaking about to put it into context. Jewish fables. Now the fable, the word for fable is muthos. Muthos. Muthos is basically the word mythos, right? Mythos, muthos. There's the old Greek way of saying it, muthos, and the modern Greek way, mythos. It's like suke is so, but nowadays they say psyche. In other words, the, the Y has more of a U sound in the Greek. So muthos right here is a speech, a word, a saying, a narrative, a story, a true narrative. Um, basically the word myth. It can be a true narrative or it can be a fiction, a fable. Right? So here Paul is advising and remember who Paul is. So he, he kind of knows what's the, the teachings and some of the other stuff that's what well, Yeshua talked about the leaven. This verse goes along with the master, Yeshua's words concerning the leaven. You know, when he talk about the leaven, like beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So here Paul is saying, not giving heed to Jewish fables, to Yehudi fables. There were certain fables among the Yehudi, you know what I mean? Um, Judaic fables that are just that. You know, sometimes when we go through teachings, we touch on it. There are areas that bring out more from the scriptures, and there's some things that are said and recounted, and we can't really find no scriptural reference. For example, there's the Jews today, they have the Hanukkah, Hanukkiah. The Hanukkah is a nine branch um, candle stand, right? You know, a candle stand, I mean, lamp stand. And they say this is just for Hanukkah, and they have some stories concerning Hanukkah. Now, actually, from the true the myth or the true narrative, the true tale, basically, during the time of Maccabees, there was the menorah. You know, the menorah has seven branches, three on this side, three on that side, seven-branch menorah. 
And during the time of Maccabees, when they was fighting against the Greeks, they only had, there was a miracle that happened. There was only a day's worth of oil, right, that lasted for eight days. So therefore, in celebration of the Maccabees fighting holidays, Hanukkah came about, and they basically burned the, 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 the lights for eight days. They burned the whole, you know, the whole, um, what you call it, the whole uh, lamps, you know what I mean, all seven. But then some people in Judaism made up this thing about a special nine branch. I'm using that to say that's like a fable. Because even in the story, it was the, the menorah, the lampstand in the temple. And the lampstand in the temple has, 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 has seven branches. Three on this side, three on that side. And in the shape, it was like in the shape of the Star David. You know, I like how you put two fables together. The nine menorah and the word Judaism. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I don't know if you did it intentionally, but it tickled me. I like it. You know, it's like it's like either you are into hip hop or you're into hip hopism. <laughs> <laughs> either you're you're Rastafara or you're into Rastaism. You know what I mean? That means that like you're a fan or something like that or a stand, whatnot. You know, but if you're really about it, then, you know, yeah. So the Jewish fables, he was saying, there was a lot of Jewish fables. Because what was happening was that because of Yeshua and the Nazarene, a lot of Gentiles was taking interest in what the Nazarenes and this Yeshua, a lot of, you know, a lot of other nations. So among those Yehudi, right, that were faithful in Yeshua, these Gentiles were coming to them and basically, you know, the Gentiles had wealth. So some of the other Jews, you know, our own people, Yehudi, that didn't believe in the Messiah, they wanted to get in on this. So they was telling like ones, well, you can't really follow Yeshua because Yeshua is a, is a Yehudi. So the only way you can follow Yeshua is you got to become a Yehudi in order to follow him. So what they would do, you know, like in order to become a, a, a Yehudi at some times, you had to go through conversion. You see what I'm saying? So this yeah. conversion was a very expensive rite. You had to get your your thing cut and everything. You know what I'm saying? You know, you had to go through a lot of kind of stuff. So, and they were charging them for it. So what? that's why Paul was licking out on them, was saying that I wish they were cut off. It's not that circumcision is not a right among the Hebrews or the Israelites or the Yehudi. But they were trying to tell other peoples that you had to become a Jew before you could follow, right, Yeshua. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like you had to go through this conversion. And the conversion was a monetary course. So this is what they meant by the filthy lucre. It's only telling somebody that in order to become a Rasta, right, Rastafari, you got to go to Jamaica, right? And, you know what I mean? Hit up all the bingy houses. You know, but, but, but maybe this is what's going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, only you have to buy your way into it. And then you were, was worthy to follow Yeshua. But by that yeah, when time... You get a chance, when you get a chance, check your messenger. When you just say there about the Rastafari houses and stuff, um, I send you a hand you of Van speaking about something to deal with that type of vibe. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get a screenshot so I could bring that up here. You know what I mean? So, true, true. So the Jewish fables... It's, right? not, it's actually audio. Sorry, not a video. It's an audio. Okay, okay, but 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 def okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna check that. Um, I don't get in this Jewish fable thing, because um, how can I say, the word basically is Jewish myths. Is Jewish myths, you know what I mean? In other yeah. words, they were additional things that was kind of like added on to. You know what I'm saying? Like I mentioned about Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Is not the, it was not commanded in the sense of the holiday of Hanukkah, but the the, the Hanukkah it, Maccabees fight that all happened, you know what I mean? But then the Hanukkah, where they have a nine branch thing instead of the seven, that's nowhere in Scripture, and the stories that they make up to justify it is a fable. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it's like um. It's like the same thing, same thing in, 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 in Christ, among Christians. Santa Claus. Like, like, if we were to put it on the Christians, we would say, don't give heed to Christian fables. And what's a Christian fable? Easter. Easter egg, bunny rabbit. You know what I mean? Valentine's Day, you know, give chocolates out. 
You know, all these kind of things. Like, if you want to do it, just so you want to do it. But if you want to say this has something to do with the Bible and God and all that, you know, Santa Claus. Santa Claus is a Christian fable. You know, the, 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 the Christmas tree is a Christian fable. It has nothing to do with the story of Yeshua, even according to the Bible. No Christmas tree, no Santa Claus, none of that there. No Easter eggs, no bunny rabbit, none of that there. You see what I'm saying? So this is what Paul was warning about, but some people take this to mean anything that's Yehudi. You know what I mean? Even the Torah or whatnot like that. That's where the Pope came in, you know, doing his thing. And the commandments of men. That's the Pope there. The commandments of men. That turn. Notice what it says. The commandments of men that turn from the truth. That means if you have logic you read this and you understand that there are commandments of men that turn from the truth and there's commandments of men that turn to the truth or point to the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And the commandments of men that turn from the truth. You know, where men will tell you, well, the Sabbath, seventh day has been done away with. So don't even think about that. Just church on Sunday. You know what I mean? That right there is a commandment of men, right? The pure, all things are pure. Now this is deep. This is this is some um, <laughs> Nazarene, you know, Gnostic thing. You know what I mean? Yes, to the right, pure, yes, right. all things are pure. This is like some metaphysical thing here. This is like, really, this is this is real spirituality. If you can get this, to the pure, all things are pure. But to them that are defiled and unbelieving, right, and not credit worthy, nothing is pure. Nothing is pure. So it's telling us about a certain mind state, right? But even their mind and their conscience is defiled, right? Even their mind and their conscience is defiled. So to the pure, all things are pure, right? But to them that are defiled, I, I think that's giving us more insight on what he said in the verse before. They profess that they know Elohim, but in works they deny him. Remember what Yeshua said? All that the Pharisees and the scribes bid you observe, observe, right? But don't do after their works. Didn't, didn't the Yeshua say that? Yeah. All that they bid you to observe. So when the Pharisees and scribes, the religious leaders, they talk about, okay, here's the Passover. And, and this is the, we're supposed to observe, we observe that or, or such and such. But we're not following their works. That's why he says here, they profess that they know Elohim. But in works, they deny him. So that, that's, that's, that's deep in so many ways right there. You know, being abominable. <laughs> that word, abominable. Right? This word right here, um, bedu, uh, beduluctos, beduluctos, detestable, disgusting, almost like. You know, detestable. Right? And disobedient. And to every good work, reprobate that word reprobate basically adokimos it means like not standing the test and they're not approved this comes from like when you test metals almost like fake in a sense you know like like it's used like of testing metals and coins that which does not prove itself such as it ought you know they say they're this but you know they say they're christian but they don't know anything about the gospel you know what i'm saying they're unfit for, unproved, spurious, reprobate. But another way of bringing this out is like criminal, like worthless. You know, this right here. Yeah, this is Timothy, Timothy 1 right here. Let me go back to this right here. Yeah, yeah. This part, yeah, this part right here. So yeah, so he's wanting Tim, uh, uh, T, uh, Tito. He's wanting Brother Tito, you know what I mean? About like what to watch out for. You know, you know, this witness is true. Sure. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. So you see what that says? That means that sometimes one has to get their sword, the sword, you know what I mean? They have to, you know what I mean? You have to speak up. Rebuke them sharply, right? Yeah. It didn't even say just rebuke them, but rebuke them sharply. You know, if you rebuke somebody sharply, that means your rebuke, your rebuke got a cut. Your rebuke got a cut. But this is so that they might be sound. The word sound is interesting here. I noticed this in, in them hark. In them hark is tenama, is, is like tena, healthy. The word sound, when it uses it in this sense, it means like to be healthy, 
to be in good health. You know what I mean? It's, it's speaking of the Nazarenes and Christians whose opinions are free from any mixture of error. Right? One who keeps the graces and is strong. You know what I mean? One who keeps the graces and is strong so that they might be healthy. So in a sense, to rebuke them, right, was a way of, of, of helping them, correcting them. You know what I mean? And know the difference between Torah, right, and Torah teaching and certain Jewish fables, Jewish myths. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, that right there really requires somebody like Paul to really understand. A lot of Gentiles, they just think, you know, anything they can understand in Hebrew is a myth. But you have to be able to distinguish, you know what I mean, between, like I said, a lot of people are Christians and they have Santa Claus, Easter egg, bunny rabbit, you know what I'm saying? And yet that is a Christian fable. I want to go to um I want to go to Second Peter. I want to get this thing before we even try to close up. I want to get Second Peter in. Second Peter verse verse two. Uh was to start saying but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false prophets amongst you let's go over here um second peter yeah second peter 2 okay 2 and it's funny because yeah you could kind of tie in you could kind of tie in the last sentence of chapter one into chapter two, you know. Oh man, yeah, I don't even have no pictures of some of the some some of the Martin guys they got, but you 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 know them by by their by their works. <laughs> you know them by their works. Okay, yeah, here we go. This is a good one right here. Yeah, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get into this right here. Yeah, false prophets. But well, there should be false prophets. What's the word that? Yeah, let me read. Um, let me read the the last sentence of um. Pseudo. Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty one, where it says, "For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God Amlak speak as they were moved by the holy." Spirit. Uh, but you see, you see this verse right here. I had to scroll back to it right here. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Now notice what it says. Did it say scripture? Did it say Psalms? Did it say it prophecy. prophecy? So, the, so where this one has to be able to read in scripture and know where. Something's prophecy, and the prophecy didn't come by the like man. Hey, I'm, I want to be a prophet, you know what I mean? But holy men of Elohim spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So, so to the to chapter two and two, right? Chapter two, start off verse one. But there were pseudo prophets. That's actually the word in the Greek. Um, pseudo prophetes means false prophets. Yes, yeah, pseudo. They were pseudo prophets. <laughs> you know, one who acting the part of a divinely inspired prophet utters falsehoods under the name of divine prophecies. Wow, like for a, a pretended foreteller, yeah, imposter. All right. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, that's interesting because going back to the Israelites. Like in, in, in areas of the Old Testament or the, or the Hebrew Bible. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about Baal and, and Jezebel and Ahab, where there was like Micaiah and those the, the other false prophets where the lying spirit was sent on them. 
and so saying as they were the false prophets back in the times of the Hebrew Bible in the New Testament there'll be false teachers who will bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord look at that verse even denying the Lord that bought them that bought them hmm and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Wow. Hmm. What the, um, go ahead, go ahead and finish tree. Finish the um, um, stuff that you um, And through tree. covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation Slumbereth not. Mm. Okay. Um. The word brought. That they um, bought. The word bought. What does that original translation bring out? Well, like, is, it, like, is, it, is, it, is that we? Is like we think like you know like you buy something you, you know you bought something like I bought a car I bought is that really the translation are we supposed to come out? Well, yes, in the basic sense. But it, it, the the more specific, the detail is, well, the word itself is the word like to go to market. Like if you go to market to purchase something. But in the sense here, the secondary sense is to redeem. Remember what we were talking okay, about? That's what I was about that. Okay, that's what I was about that. Yeah, yeah, that redeem, like to redeem somebody or something, like to buy them back. You know what I mean? In that sense. So it's the Lord that purchased us. Almost like saying that we are, like, they, it meant me that these ones were actually in the faith at some point you know what i mean and believed in the lord and the lord had purchased them but now they had gone beyond and they become these pseudo prophetes these yeah, pseudo prophets let me jump down to 17 let me jump down to 17 same same chapter where he said these are well without water clouds that are carried without tempest to whom the midst of the darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, mm. they are lower, though their lust of the flesh to much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error, while they promise them liberty. Mm. They themselves are servants of corruption. Mm. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Wow, that's that, that verse there. That verse there. If you want to read that one down, go ahead, please. Oh, that verse there, that verse there. That reminds me of um the so-called um the craftsman of yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, this verse, these verses here, these verses, these verses. Uh the part where it says about um that that those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. You know how we're talking about what those words mean, like reproof and doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness, you know what I'm saying? That these ones that they get caught up, the ones that they, um, you know, are able to lure through the lust of the flesh, like the carnal things, like, you know, like a new, a new plane, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. While they promise them liberty, like liberty here is to be taken as like, 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 like liberty, freedom, you know, liberty, freedom. This is one of the areas like freedom, right? It can be legitimate freedom. Or can be like illegitimate, licentious, right? Freedom. But what I find to be interesting about this verse, it has a lot to do with the the world that we live in today, right? Even the political system world that we live in today. You know, how they talk about liberty and justice, you know, and freedom for all. You know, these, 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 these sayings they be saying, you know what I mean? Sounds but, nice. It sounds nice. 
and a lot of people are still trying to like make the dream, you know, make this dream, you know, a reality, you know. And this this is like on a level where we can interpret this verse and see this verse even right now. You know, like in this kind of sense right here, there's those that promise one's liberty, freedom, and justice. Yeah, they'll use that word liberty. Look at all the different little jingles they have liberty in. You know what I mean? They themselves, the one who promised them liberty. Don't they say like, come bring me your tithe, your humble masses yearning to be free? Right? The statue of what? Liberty. Right? They promised them what? Liberty. They themselves are servants of corruption. Mm. So now, now let's put this in the real world. What the Bible is speaking about here was going on, you know, back then. We say nearly 2,000 years ago, the Antichrist was, they were Antichrist back then. But What's see up? how it has, how, how the beast has, has grown up. You know what I mean? The beast has grown now. The beast got big now. You know what I'm saying? You know, this whole system that we're living, and this is where it talks about the end of this, the times of the Gentiles. They promised them liberty. So it's both showing that these are ones in the church. There's these ones in, in, in the church, in the religious sphere. There's ones in the political sphere. You know what I'm saying? That they all use the same basic, um, you could say the, the, the same basic, what they call that? Uh, um, MO, the same modus operandi. They promised them liberty. They promised them freedom. But those who promised them freedom, they are servants. They're not even able to deliver the freedom that they promised because they're servants of corruption. Look at them. I mean, look at this Western Gentile system. Right? Liberté. That's what the French were talking about. Liberté. Liberty. What the Masons have, they talk about liberty too. But they're servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome. This is principle here. For whom a man is overcome, of the same of the same man, he is brought in bondage. In order that somebody can beat you up and overcome you, right? Can't they take you as? Can't they arrest you? Can they take you into captivity if they yeah. can overcome you? Yes. So it's saying that in the ways of say say these false prophets, people are overcome. You know what I mean? By this false doctrine that, in, in this sense, they promise you freedom, but it's like freedom from the law. You know, you always hear about... Like the, um, the name of that rap group, I think it was a rapper r and group, uh, Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> well, spiritually, yes, the counterfeit, the false prophets, the counterfeit Christianity, this has caused an arrested development of many Christians. Yes. You know, because notice what it says up, 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 up on the verse, the last part of the verse. It says, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. So even though they, they can, in a sense, escape from them, they get caught up by them because of the error. Yes. There's an error in their false doctrine. And there's a lot of people who call themselves Christian and don't even recognize the Antichrist false doctrine even in the doctrine that they profess on the, on the basic levels of doctrine like when they say we're free from the law going back to that whole law thing right don't don't christians teach us that we're free from the law and they say the law of the old testament and all that we're free from right yeah that's false doctrine i can prove to you in the new testament right that there's there's a law of life right in christ yeshua and then there's another law. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's only like where we started out from right there, right? Yeah, from, yeah, from the triune, you know, from the triune. So the law of the Most High, the original law, has never been done with. It's never been done away. Yeah, it's never been done away with because all the rest of the laws, whether they were of Moses, whether they were of the elders, the intention, the intention was, it's like right now, we, we we're reading Peter, we read Paul, we, we read the prophets. But now notice in the New Testament, we're reading like Paul, uh, Peter right here, and Peter is quoting many things from the Old Testament. You see yes. what I'm saying? And he's trying to give advice to those who are seeking to walk the way, truth and life. Those who have come to the way, that's what it was called. It wasn't called religion, it was called Christianity, it was called the way. 
Those who has right. come to the way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Those right. who have come right. to the way, isn't he trying to give instruction to be wise? What did Peter, Paul say? He said, be wise to salvation, right? So he is, the Lord didn't tell, he didn't say the Lord told him to say this. But he's giving you from his knowledge of what thus saith. You know what I mean? And then also giving advice, like instruction, that if taken in the right way, can be useful. You see what I'm saying? Can be of, but these ones who come along here that he's warning about, they're taking great liberties. You know what I mean? And they promise people liberty because you're free from the law. Or they're saying that the love of God is unconditional. Pause on that for a moment. How can the love of God be unconditional when the word says, Yeshua says, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my sayings and the Father will love you and we will come and sup with you and, and make our abode with you. Wait, hold on for a moment. Isn't that a condition? Yes. Yeshua says, if you love me, yes. then you will do this. And because you do this, my Father will do that. So that means that that God the Father doesn't just love everybody, right? No, that's false doctrine again. You see what I'm saying? It says, for God so loved the world. Like, I so love my people that I do what I do, even though sometime it might, I might feel like, wow. You know what I mean? In other words, it doesn't mean that I, I'm loving everything they do. I'm loving everything about them. But, but he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should do what? Believe in him. But they always cut that part out. They, I've even seen some memes where they put a period after for God so loved the world. Right? They put a period there. And they try to make it like that's a sentence. No. It's a long sentence that what they do, they promise them liberty. Liberty from what? The rest of the, the sentence. You know what I mean? The rest of the sentence. For God so love, God love you. And if you say, God love you just the way you are, come to Jesus. What do you say? You liberate them from the truth? Yeah. You know, God loves you as you are, right? Um, then uh, I would ask the question, if, if the, he's unconditional, why does he ask me to believe? Why do I have to believe? Right? If it's unconditional, then why do I have to believe? You could believe for me then, right? Yeah, I hope so. Um, but see, this is the kind of thing that within the realm of what Peter, no doubt, was saying, how this, because what they were trying to do was to trying to defend the real testimony of Yeshua. Because already there was ones and ones that was trying to twist it up. You know what I mean? They promised them liberty, but they themselves are servants of Satan. Basically, they're servants of corruption. Yes. And if you get caught up in their in their in their false doctrine of the false prophets, they're gonna overcome you and you're gonna be their slave. Right? Most ones used to go to church like slaves. They didn't even recognize it. They wasn't really learning nothing. You know what I mean? Most of them I always wondered that about people. Like they didn't really even like going, but it was just like they just there's, felt, there's a simple thing in there in the in that, that explain all that to me that I didn't make it even complicated. You know, I like simplicity <laughs> in the fourth thing. When he said that we are sheep, right? As a youth who grew up around animal and them kind of things. Yeah, sure, yeah. As a youth growing up as an animal, I don't, I don't, from an animal, I don't, for me, from a, a child, I don't see the difference between goat and sheep. The behavior between goat and sheep, I know this from time I, I six, seven, eight years old, I don't know this to my core. So, when I get as an elder now in the Rastafarian movement and I get into the scriptures and things and I start to see these things and I start to see how people think how easily people are strayed into certain things. That, that simple statement that we are sheep, we are like sheep, just solve everything <laughs> for me because look at um, Waco. Look at the thing that went down in, 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 in uh, I think it was Trinidad um, in the 70s. We did all these cools where partner killed everybody for drinking the, drink this um, Kool-Aid. Kool -Aid, yeah, yeah, Jim Jones. Jim Jones, yeah. The Jim Jones, the, the David Koreshna, and these people in the early, early, you know, I think it was the early 2000s, late 90s, when they were talking about this comet 
gonna come true and they gonna write on the comic. Oh, down. hell, Bob, hell, Bob, for something like that. So, <laughs> hell, how Bob, many people are still to these things. When you see a amount of people that just willingly go along with these things, are you sitting here to yourself saying this is foolishness? How can anybody? You can't comprehend how anybody could do this because you, in your head, this is foolishness. So, for you to try to comprehend foolishness on that level, you can't do it. Because if you could have comprehend foolishness on that level, you would have been there with them. Mm, 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 <laughs> yeah. The only way you can comprehend that foolishness is to be there with them. Yeah, yeah, those who are clean, escape, because they offer them some, it's, it's that strong delusion. It kind of yes. goes to the, the the whole thing about strong delusion, but it. But remember, it's like choices. When we when we're able to make choices, we have to be careful of the choices we make because some choices it seems can lead to the point where it seems like you don't have no choice. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If you make the wrong choices, it's almost like imagine everyone is born with with free will or or, or with will willpower. Yes. But as life goes on, if you make certain choices to go along with this one, to follow that one, to obey this thing, it limits it limits you. But almost all of we don't do that in life, you know. You don't make a decision that put yourself between a, hard, a rock and a hard place. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and when you get there, now you start to backtrack in your mind how you get to this place. And when you realize how you got there by a decision you should not have made, because something was telling you to do the opposite of what you just did. But what you did seem more appealing, or more pleasing, or more The lust of the flesh. The flesh. Go back ah, to that. Back to the heart again. The flesh. Yeah. The carnal. The carnal mind. You know? Yeah, when they say flesh, I like to use the heart, you know, because people are like the heart in flesh. Like the heart is some kind of machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 but in a sense, sometimes, yeah. Yah uses, in a sense, he's like hard in your heart, like hard yes. heart. He said he'll take the hard heart and he will put in the heart of flesh. It's almost like the people had a flesh heart, but they made their heart stony. And he did, uh, he, he did the same thing to Pharaoh. That, 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 that's another school that, 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 that had puzzled me for a while. How are you going to send me to a man? And before I reach there, you don't make the man hard harder than when you talk to me. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah, 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 encourage him more. <laughs> Encourage him more, you know. It's like not everyone who says "Lord, Lord" it takes me back to the one where he says, "I never knew you." Depart from uh, me, you lawbreakers. You know, not everyone who says "Lord, Lord," you know, "Lord, Lord." I'm telling you that Lord said, "The Lord said, the Lord, the Lord said he never speak to them." <laughs> That's what he said. You know, we'll enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, you know, you know. You remember that movie? Was it was is that crusade movie? What was it called? Kingdom of Heaven. It came out a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe no more than maybe a decade or two. Kingdom of Heaven. I remember in that in in the trailer for it, it said the Kingdom of Heaven. It was about the Crusades. It's a kingdom of consciousness. Something like that. They said conscience. And they said conscience. And that's exactly what Yeshua was saying. That not everyone says Lord Lord will enter into the Kingdom of Heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. In heaven. Now wait, where are we? When we're doing the will of the Father in heaven, where are we? Where are we? In a state of consciousness. No, 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 but we're like, are we in the heaven or are we like on earth? Oh, no, we're on earth. But we're doing the will of our Father who's in heaven, where? On earth. <laughs> Here on earth. So on earth is it in heaven. So if you can do the will of the Father, that, that means you got to know what the will of the Father is. On earth, you have entered into the kingdom of heaven and is that that, ver that verse you said about where it says and they shall know one of the verses you mentioned and we read earlier almost like they shall know from who they get it you remember they will know for, yeah from who they learned yeah. it i think it was it was paul to his disciples from who they learned it yeah. you know what i mean like, like they will know who they're learning of you know what i'm saying you know, we we'll learn who. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just seeing that right there. Cause I go to the strong delusion, the strong delusion. You know, so that they will believe what is pseudo, what is false. That Second Tim uh, Thessalonians, you know, two and ten, they'll believe that which is pseudo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. 
Let me try to pull this up, because I know we've been on here for a while. Like the oh wow, oh wow, wow. It's like 188. I don't know how how much that is in in yeah. yeah. Let me close this up. We're gonna um, we gonna circle right back wrong to Deuteronomy to close this up. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. 13. Yeah. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Okay. We, if they arise, if 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 they arise among you, a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign of the wonder came to pass. Thereof he spake to thee, saying, Let us go afar. Go out, excuse me, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us save them, or serve them, sorry, and let us serve them. That one day. Yeah, what is this to do with such a one? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What does it say to do with such a one? Let's see, let's see right here. Yeah, yeah, no, I pulled it up. I was trying to get I was trying to get some word some some word art to go with that one right there. You know, because that one is a hot that one is a hot hot scripture right there. Um because that's talking about what the Israelites were commanded to do, right? Should they come along someone who, you know, does some say they're a prophet and something they say, you know, they can predict something and it comes to pass. And then they want us to go after other gods. Okay, that's that's over here. Here we go, right here. Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy it says, and the sign or the one to come to pass. So they say something gonna happen and come to pass. Wherever he spake to thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. See, that's the key. On the Hebrew we say well, Elohim Acharim. It's like to say, yeah, literally other gods, yeah, gods, other ones, other Elohim. We'll take it down to at least verse 8. If you want to go forward and eat, you can, but I, I, I went to eat. Which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet, or that dream of dreams. For Yahuwah your Elohim proveth you to know whether ye all love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. So it's almost like saying, even if this false prophet come along or this, this prophet that talking other stuff and it happens it's like it seems to be saying that yahoo allow will allow that like to test you to see where your heart you know what i mean where your heart is you know what i mean and it says ye shall walk after right y'all shall walk after yahoo your elohim and respect him and reverence him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and y'all shall serve him and cleave to him and the prophet or that dreamer now this is interesting you got a dream you got a dream and that or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he have spoken to turn you away from yahuwah your elohim who brought you out of the land of mitzrayim and redeem to say purchase you like redeem out of the house of bondage all right that's interesting because what you read about the bondage like of whom a man is overcome so were the Hebrews, the Israelites overcome in Mitzrayim, in 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 in, in Kemet, <laughs> you know, to right. thrust thee out of the way that Yahuwah your Elohim commanded you to walk in, so shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now this is interesting right here, you know, because it's basically saying that now the key the key is this. Because it says, if there rise among you a prophet or a dream of dream that giveth you a sign or a wonder. Now think about it. Joseph had a dream, right? And Joseph's dream, came, they didn't know whether it would come to pass. It did come to pass. But Joseph's dream almost got him killed. Yeah, but notice that Joseph's dream it wasn't like the dream right here where it says, in the sign of wonder come to pass, where he spoke to thee saying, let us go after other God. gods 
which thou has not known, and let us serve them. So it's put in the context that one may be a prophet, one may be a dreamer, and maybe the sign might come to pass. You know what I'm saying? But if this is connected with going away from... He will be who he be. Yeah, Yah, you know what I mean? Going away from Yah and serving other gods, according to what's written in Deuteronomy, it says one is to have extreme prejudice. And extreme prejudice is a way like in like some languages, military, where extreme prejudice means that basically, you know, soldiers can, can kill. You know what I mean? You know, extreme prejudice is like, you know, that means, you know, <laughs> if anybody get in your way, you, you're permitted to dead on them. And this is kind of like what the Israelites are being told to do with the false prophet, because it says, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. You know, and it says, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul. Get that right there, which is as thine own soul. I would like to touch on this when we start to talk about David and the false allegation against King David. We, we talk about what David really did, but then we're going to talk about the false allegation, where it, where it says, which is as thine own soul. So the, the ancient idea of friendship was like a real friend is like like your own soul. You know what I mean? But even if that one enticed thee secretly, because they know that if you try to do it openly, you know what I mean? You know, you're going to get it openly. But they try to entice thee secretly saying, let us go and serve Elohim Acharim, other people's Elohim. Basically, the Hebrew can also be interpreted as like the Elohim of others. Right? Who thou hast not known Thou nor thy fathers, namely the Elohim of the people who are round about you. Now, this might be difficult for some ones and ones, knowing that we may love our black people on the continent, African, so forth and so on. But this is where I think the real test will come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the future, because, okay, I love the Africans, you know, and, and different, different peoples. But if you know, I'm living with them, are you living with them? Are you going to serve their Elohim? Say, well, we're in so-and-so's land. And we're going to have to abide by, namely, the Elohim of the people who are round about you, nigh to thee. Or far off from you. They could be far away. From the one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent to him, nor hearken to him. But notice what it says here. Neither shall thine eye pity him. Extreme prejudice. Neither shalt thou spear. Neither shalt thou conceal him. So even if he tells you it like quietly, yo, bro, yo, let's let's go from the the king of kings, you know, <laughs> conquering life, and go to some other thing over there, <laughs> right? Expose him. Expose him. Don't have no pity. You know, I feel sorry for him. You know, even though he's trying to have me turn my back on John, I feel nah. He says, but thou shalt, uh oh, shall surely kill him. Now, the word kill here, right, right, is the word, the same word kill, right, is not the same word as it says in the commandment where it says, thou shalt not murder, right? But thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. Now, you know, this is based on the ancient custom. Back in the ancient days, they didn't have like, a executioner, like somebody who lived in the village that whenever we need somebody killed, we go to, we didn't have nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have like a professional executioner like in the village. No, it was like if if somebody harmed somebody in your family and had murdered them, then it was up to somebody in your family to deal with that. You know what I mean? If your homie or somebody, like I said, your brother, this or that, start talking about doing some goofy stuff like that, according to what is written here, thou shalt, because this was the custom that was done. But now, notice something here about this whole verse right here. Remember, where are we, bro? What book are we in? Deuteronomy. Now, remember what De Deuteronomy's special relationship to Moshe. 
Like, this is the book where Moshe is given his, like, a deathbed confession. Moses, throughout this book, is given a deathbed confession. This is, like, I think, like, a couple of weeks. This, this is shortly before, like, less than a, a, a month before Moses is about to get out of here. Like, in the narrative. So what Moses is doing, he, he's instructing a new generation. He's trying to tell them about what things to do, what things not to do. He's telling them what Yahweh has said, and then he also is giving his advice and he's communicating some of what was done from ancient times. That's why, if you notice, it, it has the whole thing about the blood avenger. That if somebody was killed, it wouldn't be the police necessarily or the judges that would kill them, but it would be the nearest of kin. You see what I'm saying? And so it's saying that even here, I'm saying that Notice, it doesn't say that the Lord has said, Thou shalt do this. Think about it. Yeah. A lot of this is what Moses is saying in order to keep them in the covenant. Because you already know how they, you know, like we know our people. You know what I mean? We already know our people. Right? So, right here, this is what they did. But this is not necessarily what Yah had first given to them remember Moses is their mediator remember yes. so Moses now is explaining this to them like they mean like what does it mean that by the first command or the first word of the commandment I am the Lord thy God what does it mean not to have no other gods before me well okay M Moses is like okay check it out um if your brother the son of your mother or the son of your daughter you know what I'm saying he is explaining it to them, what it's like, because according to what is written in, in, the, in the words that John did speak, this is not wrong to do. Because if one is so bold to break the covenant, they already are in the covenant. If it's your brother, if it's your son, if it's your family, you know what I mean? We're all in the covenant, right? Then it says, thou shalt surely kill him. Now, of course, today, in today's world, you know, this is basically for um, objective, this is our objective lesson here. You know what I'm saying? It's like for study, for case study, right? Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people, right? And thou shall stone him with stones. For example, if I witness somebody um, say, if I witness something that somebody did and there's a death penalty charged to it, you know, my hands will have to be the first stones. Why? Because I witnessed this wrongdoing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I testified and was judged that the person is wrong. That's why it says, thou shalt stone him with stones. It's basically saying that if you witness it, you're responsible for correcting it too. That he died because the reason why here, he have sought to thrust thee from the Lord thy God. Notice. It's not the Lord that God that says, if do this, but it's Moses that's giving the command and the, the recommendation to do this, right? Because if you don't do this and you allow these people to increase more and more and wax worse and worse, you're going to be pushed out. And you know what? That's exactly what happened to Israel. That's exactly, because it came to a time when a lot of this kind of stuff was going on and Israel was tolerating, you know, faith with unfaithfulness. You know what I mean? And that caused us not to be able to resist, you know, against the enemy. You know what I mean? Um, so, so I'm just pointing this out here. This is, a, this is a good study. It's kind of a hard study because not a lot of people say that the Lord said to do this. Right? But notice, it's Moses speaking on behalf of the Lord here, right? And what he's actually saying is that any of these things that he's saying to do is against the commandment that Yah spoke himself. So going against the commandment that Yah spoke himself, basically, according to Yah, is the death penalty. Basically, breaking the Ten Commandments, any one of those is the death penalty. Any one of the Ten Words. Adultery. What's the punishment for that? Death. <laughs> Even that coveting what your neighbor's is can lead to death. You know, coveting your neighbor's yeah. wife, his property. 
You know, murder is death. Disrespecting your mother or father is death. Not keeping the Sabbath day is death. Taking a name in vain is death. Worshiping other gods is death. Not knowing the I am, he who be who he be, your Elohim is death in this world and the world to come. So what, what Yahuwah spoke out of his own mouth, the perfect law, is life. It's like a tree of life. But the violation of that, you know what I mean, is death. That's why James said, if you break one, you break them all. You know what I mean? Because he who said, don't do this, is the same one who said, don't do that. And he wasn't quoting, notice he wasn't quoting what Moses says. What Moses says goes along with the keeping of the ten words. It's almost like a reminder, like, like well, suppose somebody breaks the Sabbath commandment, right? Moses is like, are you serious? You know what I mean? Are you serious? You don't know what that means. That's death. Because by breaking the Sabbath, everybody breaks the Sabbath, then we all are dead. Basically. <laughs> or living dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like walking zombies. Like, like, like walking zombies. So what it was, like, like that's when we, when we get into a little bit more. It's like, one might think that, well, well to kill somebody, right? Like to kill a murderer is to commit a second murder. No, it's not. We didn't have no intention to kill the murderer. The murderer killed himself by committing murder. And we cannot forgive the murder. Why? Because the person who was murdered is the person who has suffered loss. So we cannot speak to the murderer no more in this, in the, in this world, according to the principle. Just according to the principle. Exactly. The, the murderer can't tell us they're sorry about what they did to someone else who they sent from, they dispatched from this world. You have to go to the person who was dispatched. At least in the East. Notice in the East and other cultures, sometimes they will kill themselves. Think about it for a moment. In some cultures, don't they, out of honor or whatever, sometimes kill themselves? The Japanese are famous for that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they would kill themselves, but you know our people, our people are like, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, for real. You, you know, the, you know, come on, man. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So, 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 so they'll keep on. They'll keep on. You know, it's, it's either that or exile. Later on, when people were no longer willing to kind of commit the, you know, the harsh, the harsher sentences of the law, it was like excommunic. That's where the excommunication kind of thing came in. You know what I mean? Like exile, you know, in that sense, you know. But yeah, my brother, yeah, this was a full one right here. I don't know how this time, 200 minutes is how long? 60, 60. <laughs> That's what it's called, just rising. Just rising. And when Rastaman reasoning, we don't have a time limit. We just reason till the reason is reason. Oh, yeah. Rastaman said fire burn the weak heart. You see, Moses' law is not for the weak heart. Being a covenant keeping Israel. Remember what Yah says, he will make us the head and not the tail. So become the head is not for the weak heart. You know what I mean? You know that weak heart where we're, where we're not going to recognize that. Yo, in truth, man. Come on, man. You know, in truth, yo. Yo. Did you want to touch anything else from the letter? Did you want to touch anything in the letter before we close up? In probably the epistles of glory. Did you want to touch anything in there before we close up? No, no, no. Probably in another reasonment. Probably another reasonment. Okay. Cause this one here, this one here is a fullness. You, you, the eye really led it into some interesting areas. We, we might have to actually, you know, yeah, flip, flip it up on, um, you know, like the title. You know, cause it, I think a main theme was about, you know, about the Torah, but it was actually given an object lesson. You know about the, those who are the shepherds, those who are like yeah. the pastors, and pre those who are responsible, like loving, loving one another, like love your neighbor as yourself. You know what I mean? Your brother as yourself. You know what yeah, I mean? It's a warning too, no? It's a warning. It's, you know, it's a warning for those out there who are who are hungry for you know for knowledge and truth and don't know exactly where to look. And there is you know. Being in the age of information is a good thing and a bad thing. 
like everything has a balance, you know. Mm. It's good to, because we didn't age information that things that you'd have to go to a library for and, you know, just to research one book, you know, you, you know, like you're in the library for hours and hours and hours, you know, probably days, you know. And now these things are at our fingertip, you know, you just click. Sometimes you don't even have to click nothing. You just press a, press the, the, on the mic button and speak, you know, true, true, and true. things pop up in front of you. But ah. the danger with that now is truth and lies popping up because there is people out there who are clever in their uh, writings and their oratory skills and they know how to deceive by weaving truth and lies entwined into each other to deceive, you know? And we live in an age where the Bible is all over the world. You know, it's the most known book in the world. And it is such a powerful book. Although you have people in this time and dispensation and been for a while trying to step on the Bible and fire upon the Bible and these things, but it's still the most popular and known book on earth and the most used book on earth. And it's powerful because anyone that sees a religious hierarchy person, whether it's the Pope, your preacher, pastor, deacon, you know, whatever title they hold, and you know they have that title and you see them with a Bible in their hand, they automatically get a, a type of respect and reverence from the people and, a, and an attention from the people who are seeking these truths and these faith. And the people do something that they should not do. Mm. When they see these people, because they are hungry for this knowledge and this truth, they let their guard down. Mm. When you see these people, based on the teachings and what we just went through here, mm. and this show, you should put your guard up. Mm, mm, not mm. down. You don't put your guard down amongst these people. You put your guard down amongst the people on your level. You don't want to be with the same people on your level trying to grow and you have your guard up against the man who on your same level. You and that man supposed to be reasoning, are supposed to be trying to sharpen each other. So your guard should be done among them so you could iron sharpen iron. You know, people on the same level reason more than people on different levels. It's how you get to other levels is by reasoning on your level. Mm, 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 and iron true. sharpen iron is like me and you in first grade together. We're going to be in second grade together. We're going to be in third grade together, fourth grade, unless one of us just decide to slip up and not pay attention and, and stay back. And but even now, in this time and dispensation, nobody stays back. They pass everybody. <laughs> so, you reason with who on your level and you sharpen each other to get to another level. This is how this thing works. So, when you see these people who are the religious hierarchy, put your guard up, not down. It shows you for 2,000 years now, plus 2,000 mm -hmm. plus years, mm -hmm. that these same energy and these same frequencies have been here doing the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. They ain't changed. This cycle, this, this cycle, this cyclical thing that we have, it continues. What was then is now, and what is now was then. <laughs> this thing has not changed. True, true, true. So we have to mm -hmm. be careful. You know, look, we just, we, you know, we spoke about it in the show that the Pope them changed the Sabbath. They tell you that day is the mediator between you and God. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. So we have to be careful with these things. And, and there was be a... Be very, very careful. Mm, mm. Now I was going to say there was a meme that was circulating where they said that don't say the YHWH name. And they, they said that it was the Pope in them that was putting it out. Like not to say the name like Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. You know, like 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 how they forbid it, you know, what, what they be forbidding. You know what I'm saying? You know, like they forbid it, the Bible for their own people, right? Until some of their people said enough of that and they're gonna print the Bible for themselves and they call themselves Protestants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but even amongst them, that same spirit, there was that verse, we read up to one verse, but I saw the next verse where they talked about, about like how the angels who didn't keep their, their original estate, you know what I mean? You know how the angels who didn't keep their own estate, 
but they wandered from there like the, the fallen angel spirits you know these spirits have been in the world you know what i mean it's whether it's the holy spirit the inspiration of the holy spirit or whether it's the other spirits and I, I like to touch on the whole spirits thing too that's another reason meant right there but i was just thinking about that that the, these same spirits have been here you know what i mean and many ones choose or have gotten taken captive you know what i mean by those by those spirits you know what i mean because telling somebody that caesar bogey is is not the jesus christ of the bible you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's kind of like hard for ones to really you know what i mean receive that's being deceived right because they were told that this is jesus and this is what he looked like and they're making other people they're making believe you know and that and that spirit has been around for how long man you know what i'm saying a very long time a very very long time you know at least two thousand at least two thousand years you know what i mean at least two thousand years you know what i mean and that's just the working patiently that is the whole thing working patiently because if you look at because we have like they call it being a monday morning quarterback we we are monday morning quarterbacks of history because we now have a chance to look back and see how things unfold and how much time it took from one you know from one century to the next how fast things moved and then you got up to the you know the, the 19th and the 20th century and saw the rapid speed that took place mm. that 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 in itself if you pay attention to that timeline when people trying to disprove that this might be the last days i can't say for sure it's the last days it's just from everything i could see and read revelation and thing i can't say it's not the last day because these things are prophecies and things are being fulfilled and things are showing that this is possibly the last days but if you look at the, the speed of how things are happening right now based on if you study history and how technology and everything has advanced for the last 2000 years what has happened in the last 50 years is remarkable if you look back to any time before then mm, yes true truly it is remarkable the speed of these things so we have to believe that this is is, is leading into something it is so it we is. have to really be careful with the the doctrines and the teachings that we are getting because there's a lot of people out here spreading knowledge and you know putting out their views of whatnot. We had a, a, a celebration for the emperor and I showed a video there where I know it was going to cause some controversy and I'm glad I showed the video because we got some real good information. Ones and one, two, that lit some fire under. You know, that people are out here putting out half-truths and mixing in their lies with half-truth and, you know, doing things that's disrespectful to the culture and the, you know, the history of our people. You know, so we have to be careful of these things. You know, and I will close out here by um, the conclusion of this letter. Tom is um, like a puzzle to Flora. I will close out. He said, um, I have not failed my sister Flora to state these matters to you briefly. And what I have just written is a concise account though i have treated the subject adequately in the future these teachings will be of the greatest help to you at least if like good rich soil that has received fertile seed you bear fruit mm. i like that conclusion there mm. you know when I read that the first time, I was like, I like that conclusion. True, you know? true, true, true. Yeah. So, when I read this just now, that kind of top off what I just said right now a little while ago about be careful who you listen to. Because the people you get your information from and who you seek this truth from, they either good soil or bad soil, you know. So, when you plant your seed, you're going to get fruit or you're going to get no fruit, you know. 
Mm-hmm. So look at the people that you're getting your truth from and your information from as soil that you're looking to plant a seed in. Because if you want to plant a seed and have a garden grow, you can try to get the best soil possible so your thing gonna grow and you can harvest. You get bad soil, you can plant seed all day and water it all day, ain't gonna, in, in nothing gonna harvest. Mm. So, and that I would like to bless everyone in the name of His Majesty Xavier Karmawe, highly, Celestia. Yes, yes. I salute you when I say cha, ras, yes, for yes. guidance and protection, love and honor to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, I, yes, I give thanks, give thanks. Shalom, Havarim, Shalom. Pick up on this as we move forward. Just vibes and just vibes and yes, I, Astafari. Right.